right, here we are. Welcome in, everybody. I'm Erin. Welcome to our Friday night tutorial here on my Twitch channel, Erin Bum Paints. Uh, welcome into everybody. We have like 60 people here. Welcome in, everybody. This is an exciting, big, big group. Uh, hope you enjoy today's, today's painting. Today's painting is a nice splashy cacti uh, plant type gig. Um, I'm pointing at it and you can't see. This is over here now. This is my actual painting. This is a digital copy that you can view during the whole tutorial. Um, but yeah, this is a nice splashy, messy painting. Um, it does use acrylic paint for those who are looking at my title saying, acrylic, this looks like watercolor, what's going on? I tr Trust me, it's acrylic, you need to believe me, it's acrylic. You will believe it because I will show you it's acrylic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use acrylic paints and I'm going to water them down and then I'm going to use them kind of like watercolor when they're very, very um, liquidy and messy uh, and very, very drippy because that's kind of the look of the painting. I wanted this messy, um, splattery look. You can see we do a little bit of splatters here and there to really mess it up on purpose. So just a very, very fun, loose painting that we can all do together here on a Friday night. Uh, for those who might be watching along and might want to paint later, uh, just know that this vid video does stay available on Twitch. It'll also be moved eventually to my YouTube channel where I post all of my other tutorial videos, youtube.com slash Paints. <clears throat> I'd recommend subscribing to that if you want to be notified whenever I upload a video. I still have a bunch from the last couple weeks to upload, so I'm sure I'll be doing that very soon. You'll get lots of new tutorials on there from the past. Uh, in terms of supplies for tonight, you can always check the chat for supplies by typing in exclamation supplies and then a bunch of little supplies will pop up. But I stick with my usual supplies. We have the exact same uh, types of paint as usual. We have again these acrylic paints. In my big, big jugs, I use the Start Academic Acrylic. You can use whatever brand, whatever shades you want, but the shades that I use include uh, red, <clears throat> yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white. So I just use five and then I kind of teach you how to mix all of these colors together. If you have more colors though ready to go, you're more than welcome to use those. So feel free to use whatever you have on hand. Uh, in terms of the brushes, I have my usual three brushes. <clears throat> we have a large flat brush, a medium round brush, and a small round brush. That's just for variety so that you can put on paint a little bit quicker or do a little more detail. So as long as you have like a couple different sizes, that's fine as well. It doesn't need to be the exact same as mine. I'd recommend definitely, of course, for this painting, cup of water. Some people were even suggesting two cups of water. I only use one for this. I just kind of keep it a little bit muddy and messy. Um, but if you'd prefer to have one to kind of wash off your brushes and then another to use that's completely clean for watering down your paint, that might be a good idea, but otherwise I use one. Uh, some sort of paint palette. I already displayed my growing soon-to-be volcano plate. Still not quite a volcano, but getting nice and thick. Uh, definitely have some paper towel. I always do recommend paper towel, but especially for this painting, this will be good to help kind of stop some drips if things get a little bit too runny. Um, especially if you're propping up your canvas vertical like me, you'll have things dripping. And if you don't want it too drippy, you can kind of tap it and rub off some paint as you go. So paper towel is definitely handy for this one. Uh, and then yeah, hopefully you're wearing something you don't mind getting paint on or you're wearing an apron. Thank you, Terry, as always, for the apron. Uh, and those are all the supplies. Again, I keep it very basic. I keep it the same week to week so you can just invest in one set of supplies and then join me at any time uh, for any other future upcoming tutorial. I do these pretty much every Friday, aside from next week when I'm doing one on a Saturday in case you want to join me again. Uh, and yeah, you can check me out on all their social medias under Erin Bun Paints if you want to keep up with me anywhere else. Facebook, Instagram, technically Twitter, but I don't usually use it. Uh, but yeah, all the other usual ones are good to know uh, just so you can keep up with what I'm doing and kind of see my schedule and uh, know when I'm online so you can come watch whenever you want. Um, I think that's it. I'll uh, do a little toast and then we can get started. So I talked a little bit already about this painting, but I'll talk a little bit more just before I touch my brush to the canvas. Um, yeah, someone was, at, Sharon was asking earlier about backgrounds, and Hokey was as well, uh, saying, did I paint the background? And my answer was no. So just for those curious, if you missed that earlier, I do not paint the entire background in this. What I do is I go straight into doing the cacti and the pots and doing all the little details on top. I do not end up painting the entire canvas white or any color. I just use white if I need to cover things up. So if you prefer to have a background, I would probably do that now. Um, I know some people were doing that before I started. That's great. If you need to take a couple extra minutes to do that now, I would do that rather than like trying to follow along and then putting a background in later. That'll be 
uh, very tough to do. It'll be very tough to go around the things with a background color. So I would just pause and uh, you can always like catch up with us live if you need to. Uh, and yeah, the other thing I guess is like I said, we're using acrylics and we're watering them down. Um, so I would recommend having maybe like a larger palette surface or just be prepared to maybe wipe away some stuff if it gets a little bit messy. So that's why I said paper towel is good. I will be using volcano plates. So I mean, it doesn't need to be the cleanest palette at all. It's just more so having a little bit more space. For me, this is still enough space. But if you're ever used to using like a smaller palette, maybe just keeping in mind you might need a bigger one today just because it gets a little messier with all the liquid. So that's all. That's all. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna start with my plants first. I'm gonna actually do all three plants, one, two, three, and then I'm going to put on the little pots, one, two, three afterwards. Uh, reason being, it's not as much an issue with these two plants, but with this middle plant, um, unlike when we use acrylics that aren't watered down, we won't be layering colors on top of one another. We will be putting on, for example, the green leaves, and then we'll be putting on the plant or not the plant, excuse me, the pot color all around the leaves. So again, what I did with this is I dotted on the green first, and then I used this pot color and kind of moved around the leaves and kept them all green. And I wasn't able to, again, stack color on color because it's so liquidy. So just so everybody knows, that's why I'm going to do it in this funnier order. Um, Cause I like, yeah, I like putting on the greenery first and then kind of moving the pot around again, more of an issue with this plant rather than these ones cause they are quite separate. But yeah, that's the process. So let's start on the left here. We're gonna start with the left cacti first. I was calling him what, the round boy before? He's like big round, <laughs> round circular shapes all kind of stacked on one another. Uh, and what I'm gonna do uh, to start is I'm going to use a very, very light green. You'll kind of see that uh, again and again, I start with my lightest colors first and then I'll be moving them to darker and darker tones just to kind of give a little bit more of a three dimensional shape with highlights and shadows. So I'm gonna use my medium round brush. <laughs> For those not surprised, there you go, medium round. And the first color I'm making is a really, really light green. So I'm gonna to mix together lots of yellow with just a tiny bit of blue, and then that's gonna turn out a very light green like this in here. So lots of yellow, a little bit of blue. Fab, hi, hi to both my sisters and my best teenagers. Jersey. Oh, fun, you're all painting together. Again, welcome in Fab, thank you again. <clears throat> no worries, Christy, it was really nice seeing you. Maybe we'll see you again soon. Thanks for popping in. <laughs> all good, it's okay, Christy, no worries, not your fault. Everyone's got to sleep. So lots of yellow, little bit of blue. And again, the idea is everybody, I want to keep this nice and watery. So I'm dipping my brush in the water and then kind of swirling it in my paint. See how liquidy and wet it's getting. See how see-through, like transparent it looks. It's very, very watery. So again, dipping my brush in the water and just moving it around in there to keep it. Look at all of it just dripping down. That's fine. All right, so I'm going to use this very, very light green color to first kind of map out where I want my cacti to go. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space for a pot. I'm gonna start maybe about a third of the way up. So I know it's a little scary because we're just kind of starting out in the open here. But again, this painting is nice and messy. So you don't need to worry too much about getting things exact. We can always purposely mess it up and splash it up. So this is a very light green. It's almost coming off like yellow though. But anyway, what I'm doing is I'm starting with a nice round circle. So I'm essentially doing the first round circle you see in the cacti here. This is going to be the base of this plant. Nice big round circle. Yeah, I'll be on tomorrow, Christy. I'll be on at 11 a.m. EST tomorrow until sometime in the afternoon. I'm usually online Saturdays at 11 o'clock. I sleep in a little bit for Saturdays. <laughs> All right, so a nice round circle to begin with. Again, very watery acrylic paint. And then what I'm doing is I'm gonna add some nice medium sized circles. They're kind of on the sides here. You don't have to add them exactly where I'm going, but I kind of uh, like with this plant, it looks like Mickey Mouse, look at that right off the bat. Um, yeah, I like kind of splitting these up a little bit. Like they have two little trails. This one almost has three. This one kind of has a stack over here, stack in the middle, one on the side. Yeah. 
So a little Mickey Mouse to begin with. Sounds good, Christy. I'm glad. I'm glad. And again, we don't need to worry about getting these exact for now. We're just mapping out where they're going. Yes, Mickey! I would put little eyes in a face just to like really, really show. <laughs> but with watercolor, I don't want to start messing around with that stuff. Unlike acrylic, I won't be covering it all up, right? Oh, man. All right, I'm just going to add a couple more little uh, round circles. They can be kind of oval shaped too. You can see maybe as they get a little taller, you want to make them a little more oval. I'm going to keep this one. Yeah, just right there. I made them a little bigger. And yeah, adjust as you go. Just like with the acrylic, you can still adjust a little bit because we are using a nice light color. So as you're going, you can make circles a little bigger, a little smaller if you need to. Again, I'm really trying to stick to what I made originally, so I'm really trying to stick to the same stacks that you see in the original, but you can really stack them however you want, just using circles and ovals. Name suggestion. Oh yes, I forgot, Lori. Um, happy cacti, beauty with spikes, watch the prick. <laughs> I like watch the prickles, that's cute. Yeah, Lori's giving name suggestions. I forgot to say this in my intro. Um, but I never really name my paintings myself. I always ask for suggestions in the chat. Uh, and then when I upload these to YouTube, I end up putting the name in the title. So if anyone else has any name suggestions, feel free to let me know. I have not pizza. I have not. Um, I kind of stay away from copyrighted material, especially Disney. They're really scary and big. Um, so if you're like thinking, would you paint like Mickey Mouse? The answer would be no, I wouldn't paint Mickey Mouse. I could paint like a cute cartoon mouse, but it wouldn't be Mickey, you know, you know? Yeah. Free hugs as a painting title. <laughs> That's just a funny painting concept. Hokey, if we put a little sign here that said free hugs and the cacti is just like smiling. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Oh, cute. That's very, yeah. Pizza, I think I'm uh, more cautious than others because I've seen others uh, paint and teach uh, using quite copyrighted like characters and material and I don't think they've gotten in trouble, but I just want to be careful. I'm just kind of paranoid. And also like I can come up with my own stuff too, you know? A little bit of both. Um, right, so we have the outline, a very basic outline. So hopefully we're comfortable with the general shape. Again, you can still change it up, make things a little bigger, make things a little rounder if you need to. But now I'm going to start filling in with this color. I'm going to start filling in all of these little circles with this very, very light green. So as long, again, as long as it's a very, very light green, we can use this to fill in the entire thing. Super light green. So I don't leave this white. So for those wondering, I'll zoom in here. This is just a very, very light shade of green in here. So we can actually use this color and fill in all over the spot, all over the place. So already we can see some drips on mine. So I just want to save or not save. I just want to get rid of any drips um, that are right at the bottom here only because I want to put my pot here. So again, unlike acrylic paint, it's a little bit harder when it's all wet, watered down. I'm going to compare it to watercolors again. It's very uh, difficult with watercolors to erase unless we kind of put a layer of white paint over top and then let it dry and then go on top again. So just to make it a little bit easier on myself, I'm just going to keep making sure I don't have too many drips going on just on the bottom. Um, I love the drippy look of this painting and therefore I'm going to hope for drips like further up here. I want to keep my drips a little higher up so they're not interfering with this pot that we're going to put here later. So that's why I'm just touching up the bottom of this guy a little bit. But yeah, otherwise I'm still using that very watery paint and I'm just moving it all around the insides here. I'm letting, yeah, letting the water kind of move the paint around. You can kind of see how it's getting lighter in certain areas. That just means maybe the paint is a little thinner. And the way I'm applying is kind of just like smushing or swirling it on. You can use little brush strokes if you want, but again, I'm trying on purpose to be messy. Go outside the lines a little bit, kind of smush your brush a bit. Keep watching the bottom, keep fixing the bottom if you need to, or catching those drips. If, uh, if at the bottom you're going to choose a pot color different than mine that's maybe like a darker color, you might not have to worry about drips as much. 
Um, I personally have more of a yellow-orange pot, so the green would very much show up if it was drying there and dripping down. So that's why I keep trying to uh, tap it away there. Other name suggestions. All that blooms or blooming cacti. That's appropriate because we have the little blooms. All that blooms is kind of a cute one, too. True, love your content as is. It's better and safe than sorry. Oh, thanks, pizza. Yeah, it, that's that's pretty much it. Like, I I just don't think Disney would be watching me anyway. Like, why would they be <laughs> coming over to Small Potato Streamer and being like, I don't like that you're teaching Mickey Mouse to, to 60 people today, you know? <laughs> I don't think they'd be too upset, but that's exactly as you said. Better safe than sorry. And, you know, maybe that on YouTube, for example, that kind of lives on YouTube forever. That's not a, not a great look. Yeah, yeah, it's just I'd rather stick to my own stuff. You too can paint almighty pictures. Thanks, Bob. I know this. I am aware. Look at it all. See, I love the drips for this reason. I personally love all this messiness. So if you want more of that, you could even just take a brush with water after your paint is on here and just kind of smoosh the water on and see how it just moves all the paint around, right? So you could kind of experiment that way if you want as well. Just keep it very messy. Uh, and again, I'm purposely going outside the lines. Uh, I'll point out in my original, I will be outlining everything. I personally like this outlined look of like the black and the dark green and everything. Some of you might not want an outlined look, um, and that's okay too. I think this looks great both outlined and non. Um, if you want it not outlined, you might may maybe, you maybe want to be a little more careful, a little less messy, just because you won't have the kind of cleanup phase. So you still want to make sure you can kind of see the general shape you're making. It doesn't want to be like completely, you know, out there in terms of shape. But otherwise you can be quite, quite messy because again, the, the lines that we do later are really going to clean everything up. Abby, nice to see you. Welcome back. Happy Friday. Hello, hello. See that drip? I'm letting that go. I love that one. I just want to keep watching these ones. I'll keep wiping those away. So I'll just give a minute or two if you're still adding. Again, this is just the first kind of very light green shade that we're doing. I changed my mind. I like it there. We're going to stop. <laughs> it's going to go all the way down if we keep letting it go. <laughs> oh, can't wait for splattering, though. Splattering is really fun in this one, too. Getting an even messier. I'll zoom you in here. See all that stuff? Yeah, I love that. All the very intentional splattering. See, and I even, I'll let my pot drip a little bit here. It's more so just the green and the orange I'm trying to stop. So anyway, that'll be a fun little addition when we get there. Completely out there in terms of shape describes me perfectly. <laughs> you are the cute cacti. One of a kind. Cute little cacti plant. Okay, so you'll actually notice this does dry, I think, relatively quickly still. Um, even though it's watercolor, I feel like, oh, up here it's already dry. Uh, we don't need things to dry as we go on to new layers, so don't worry about that. But uh, yeah, just be comforted knowing it won't take that long to dry still. At least from what I'm seeing, what I saw when I was painting this. I decided to do my own cactus plant. I have a very pr pretty picture of it blooming, so I'm using that. Oh, yes, please do flying socks. But yeah, if anyone's like plant mania and loves their plants and has specific plants they want to use, go for it. You can use my techniques and just do any shapes that you want. Absolutely. It's everything I've ever wanted to be cute, but not easily huggable. <laughs> just a wee bit prickly. <laughs> oh, Poppy. You found your spirit plant. It's a cactus. Is this watercolor, Abby? No, it's technically acrylic. Um, I'm just really watering down the acrylic, but it is still my usual paints that I use for every tutorial. If you have watercolor, you could easily use watercolor for this tutorial, but otherwise I'm just watering down acrylics. I do have watercolor, but just to keep it consistent with my usual acrylic tutorials, I'm using acrylic today. Yep, thank you, Lori. All right, everybody. So once I have this first layer of this really, really light green, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making a slightly darker green on my plate. So I'm just using my brush. 
I'm going on top of anywhere where my watery green has traveled and I'm just grabbing a little bit more blue and mixing it in. That's gonna create a little bit of a darker shade. Still nice and watery. And not too much darker, just a little bit. As long as it's a little darker than your last one, that's fine. Looks like watercolor. Yeah, yeah, Abby, for sure. It's all drippy and stuff. And again, it is because my canvas is vertical. If I were to keep it horizontal, it could be a lot more, um, a lot more clean. Not as messy, but for me, I like the messiness, so that's fine. So slightly darker green. Connecting with cactus vibes for sure. <laughs> Is patience key with you, Poppy? Because I feel like with cacti, patience is key. Don't they have like blooms that take a while to grow or a while to uh, to show themselves? But then when they do, it's beautiful. Maybe that resonates. Ooh. All right, so I've got a darker green here. And what I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to just put this around the edges and work my way in a little bit. So I'm kind of redoing these round shapes, the round boy shapes. Again, tapping as it drips right at the bottom there. But I'm trying to like close in a little bit towards the middle, so I'm not sticking all the way to the outside. I just kind of start on the outside, kind of, again, just swirl or tap my brush a little further in. But I'm gonna leave a little bit of this edge, not the edge, I guess, more of the middle open. I'm not gonna bring this color all the way in. I'm just going to stop a little bit, and then I'll kind of re reapply on the right hand side so I'm leaving a little bit of a gap I'm leaving it exposed in there and I'm not really going in the dead center that's why I panicked a bit there and I was like the edge the center not really I'm kind of doing like off center a bit just kind of this right hand side almost you can choose wherever you want your highlights to be but you can see on all of my all of my little items here I have kind of the middle right middle right middle right so I would just keep it consistent whatever you choose uh, if you ever need to kind of blend things out, see how this kind of harsh line is forming? What I do is I just use a brush with just water on it, so I just quickly wash it off, and I just kind of move it within that edge, and that kind of erases that, that harsh edge. See that? You're kind of moving the paint around a little bit more, making it liquid again. Again, clean it off if you need to. Grab a little more clean water. Move that around. Now that edge is a little more, yeah, a little more watered down. You could also tap paint away, so maybe your green, this new green kind of went a little too far in the middle. You could use a paper towel as it's still wet and just tap it away. See how it left a little bit of a blank spot there? So feel free to do that if that's a little bit of an easier technique. You could just apply these colors and tap away a little bit each time. I just kind of do that as, as needed, personally. Oh, you know me so well. The yeah, depth of shading sides looks nice. Thanks, Poppy. Yeah. Yeah, I like this technique. It's just kind of like one after another after another. It's the same same steps for a little bit with each uh each little shape here, but you can see it all very much come together with each each new shade. Looks better and better for sure. So yeah, just taking that same color and going up to the next little round objects here. Round cacti pieces. Same thing, I'm using a watery brush, just kind of moving those edges around. Tap, tap, tap. Keeping it nice and messy. Again, you can use your paper towel if you need to. Tap, tap, tap. Gives a little bit of a nice texture too, right, when you do that? So feel free to experiment. Let's go in here. And I'm just continuing to think of those who have backgrounds. So if you have a different background than white, you just might find that you might need to use slightly darker colors. Again, I didn't do anything on the background in mine, so it's hard to say because I haven't really experimented with colored backgrounds. But I would suspect you probably just can't start as light. You'll probably just need to go straight into maybe like a medium green and then do some much darker greens as you go to the outside. And then that way it's going to contrast a little bit better with your background. Otherwise, I would just go layer after layer, kind of stack on top, and I'm sure you'll find it go greener and greener and greener each time. Just might take a little more patience because you have that colored background, right? Working my way up, up, up. Let's go up here. Again, edges. Moving in a little bit. Tap, tap, tap. 
Nice and messy still. Lots of water in my paint. Very liquidy. Again, I love the idea of all these colors dripping into one another, even if they're separate circles. I just let it happen. So once again, I'll give another minute or two if you're still experimenting with that color, and then we're just gonna go a little bit darker again. I think I went in three, three, maybe four times with different greens. Uh, it's of course up to you. If you wanna do even more layers of green just to get even more depth, you can. I found three to four layers or three to four different shades was about good enough to get the transition that you're seeing from here to here. Mm-hmm. Whittle plant, welcome in, CJ. <laughs> you whittle plant, how's it going? Happy Friday. Okay, so I'm just going on my plate here mixing an even darker green. So again, take your time if you're still adding this other green keep going but otherwise same idea oops so I accidentally splattered there but that's okay <laughs> that's fine <laughs> we'll be doing that later so whatever my bristles just got caught here and just went <laughs> straight on the canvas brilliant uh yeah I'm making a darker green so once again adding a little extra blue into my existing watery green which is again everywhere on here at this point and I'll just do the same thing uh the only difference being that this time I'll stay even tighter to the edge so starting on the edge again, this time not moving in closer to the middle, I'm just going to move in maybe this much. And then when I use the water, I'm sure it'll travel around a little more. So I'm going to wash my brush off, a little more water, kind of move that around, tap it around, big drip there. Thanks for shining out CJ. Oh, your parent. Oh, okay. Oh, I had no idea. Very fun, very fun. Do you make maple candy, CJ? Just out of curiosity, because I'm in the I'm in the market for some maple candy right now. <laughs> Need to find some maple candy. I knew you made syrup, but I don't know how extensive you get with your maple product. But I'm good, thanks. Feeling splashy, feeling messy. I'm glad you're happy, Abby. It's good to be happy. So again, I'm still using water on my brush and I'm just moving around the paint I've already applied. I think that's a good idea because then that way, again, you can kind of apply the paint where you want and then slowly move it around rather than continuing to add paint on your brush and then getting a little too messy with it all. You can just kind of use what's on the canvas. So if your bottom here is getting messy like mine is, don't worry, I have a fix for it. Um, it'll still help you though to try your best to just kind of catch those drips just to have less to cover up, so. That's what I'll be doing, by the way, is covering it up with white paint if it looks a little too bright and messy down there. Oh, thanks, Terry. I actually didn't know that. I was going to see, like, if there was a local spot that did it that I could uh, safely pick up from. Yeah, of course, says, oh, so can he. <laughs> it's actually not even for me, okay? <laughs> if there's snow, pretty barren. Yeah, it looked it looks pretty dry where I am too. I of course up where you are is a whole different story it seems like despite it being relatively close, but yeah, I'm not surprised. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Okay, maybe I'll check out Bulk Barn. Terry, I don't know if you're able to vouch for its quality. Shocking, I would have never guessed that. <laughs> you can buy maple candy in bulk at Bulk Barn. <laughs> Same thing, tapping here and there. Tapping even helps just with blurring the edge, even if it's not like trying to remove paint. It's a good way to blend as well, right? You can just kind of tap the edge away and then re-add paint as you need. <laughs> Yeah, me very well made. Oh, sick. Okay, thanks, Terry. That's very helpful. 
Excellent. Redhead Moon, thank you for following and welcome in. I'm doing a step-by-step -step tutorial right now, so you're welcome to chat and chat. You're welcome to just sit and watch if you like. Some people are painting along though, so just letting you know I'll be kind of going back and forth from instructing and then chatting with everybody. But happy Friday. Thanks for the follow. Again, tapping, tapping. Let's go into each and every little bulb of this cactus. You can see how my circles are kind of getting messier and messier. Some of them are turning oval shaped. Some of them are just looking wavy on the outside. That's all fine. It all adds to this painting. Still been trying to maple taffy, the one that's rolled in the snow. Oh yeah, I've seen so much online. It looks so good. We've watched videos, pizza, on stream <laughs> during uh, like weekday or weekend streams, not during tutorials. I'll pull up YouTube videos here and there. And that's one that we've watched because I was trying to describe it. And people were like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, watch. <laughs> Here, here's a YouTube video. You can see what happens. I'm glad you know about it though, yeah. Delicious stuff. I haven't had an opportunity to really go get it because there hasn't been a lot of outdoor, you know, festival activity stuff. Usually that's where I find it is at like, you know, if there's little city weekend festivals downtown or something or uh, at farmer's markets and things like that. It's usually where it's found, but not a lot this year, so. Or maybe I just have been missing them, I don't know. Not looking for that kind of stuff right now. But it's fine. It's fun just to like watch happen. Some of them let you do it too. Roll it all up on a popsicle stick. All right, so I'm gonna do one more layer. Again, it's kind of up to you how many different layers you wanna do, how many different shades of green you wanna do. I'm just gonna do one more right on the edges. So just a little more blue. You can see how dark that looks on the edge now. Another key to getting it nice and dark is you could use less water. I'm honestly using a little less water here. It keeps it a little more controlled too. So be very beneficial when you're using darker colors, right? I would say you want to be a little more careful with those. So I just used a little less water in my mixture. I kind of used a little extra paint. And then I go in with my watery brush and move it around a bit. But you can see how dark that edge looks now. I think that was a nice last little little layer. So I'm going to add that to each of my little layers of cactus here. Again, I'm trying just my best to keep that kind of right middle area open. So continuing to tap if any paint gets further in the middle, but otherwise anywhere surrounding is okay. Messiness again is good as long as as long as colors are like generally staying where they need to be they can still interact and have fun Let them hang out a bit let them interact Move them around <laughs> Heather, hello. Hi, Erin. Hi, chat. How are y'all tonight? I'm good, thank you. It's nice to see you again. From Odo's stream, yeah? We're uh, doing a tutorial tonight. Nice little step-by-step. -step. We're doing our little watery cactus plants that you see above me. We're good, though. Just hanging out. Some people are painting along, Heather. Some just like to sit and chat on a nice Friday night, so... Whatever you're up to, that's cool. J Height! Thank you! Wow, we've got a lot of subscriptions today. J Height, thank you so, so, so much. Look at you go. Thank you. Two months, two months. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, I'm liking that. Again, that was my fourth shade of green. Personally, you can do as many or as few as you like. I would recommend around three. I think three is about necessary to get the nice transition from dark to light. Four makes it even darker on the edges. I'm sure five, six, seven would make it, again, even more colorful, even more dramatic depth-wise. So totally up to you, but I stuck with four. 
Um, I'll stop right there for now. Actually, I won't. I'm gonna do an optional step while we're waiting. So if you're still adding green, please keep going. Again, I'm just doing an optional kind of fix up step right now. So you will still have lots of time to do this too if you're still adding green, but just in case anyone's ready and looking to fix up their bottom here. All I'm doing very simply is I'm just grabbing white paint. I'm making sure my brush is nice and washed off. I'm still using medium round, using white paint, and I'm just going to start applying it over top of anything that I don't want. So again, this is me prepping for the pot later. I just don't want any green to be showing through my orange pot because I'll be using kind of orange and yellows. So just to be sure, I'm kind of cleaning up the bottom here just to give myself a nice blank area. Oops, see, I grabbed a little green by accident, probably right here. So yeah, use your paper towel to kind of dry things up or remove it, and then you can use your brush to go over top with white. You might need two coats. I think I will need two coats. I see a tiny bit of green showing through. Just to be safe, I'll make sure I do a second coat in a couple more minutes. But again, optional step, I'll now give lots of time if you're still working on the green or working on that fix up step before I move on here. <clears throat> just heard that, just a song. That's what got stuck in my head. Oh no, not that one, CJ, oh no. Oh, thanks, pizza. This is nice, calm stuff. I think you've asked about it before, but if not, it's Lily Pichu. Nice piano stuff. Thanks, Jay Height. I really appreciate that. The words more than the sub, honestly, but thank you, thank you. <laughs> Seven layers, the drama! <laughs> Eight, nine, ten layers, the drama! I kind of like this one better than my other one, honestly. <laughs> He's a little more bumpy. All those nice textures in there. I kind of like this one better than my old one. It's kind of like the more you do it, the better you get or something. Hmm. Because I haven't done this technique a whole lot at all. Yeah, no worries, pizza. If it wasn't you who asked, it was someone else recently. Makes you want to do one large 27 layer cactus. Honestly, Poppy, that would be beautiful if you got like a bigger canvas. And because that way you would have more room to work with, right? We're working with the small circle. So that's why we don't need so many like layers or different shades of color. It's such a small space to fill. But if you're doing a big space, if you did like this whole thing as a cactus, you'd have all these, yeah, way more width to kind of go from light to medium to medium to dark to darker to darker. So there you go. Oh, it was me. Okay, Hokey, gotcha, gotcha. Dreamy Nights. Yeah, it's kind of on a Lily Pichu um, kind of list right now, so you might even hear it. Dreamy Nightmares was played. I'm not sure if that's the one you were thinking of two songs ago. They're all kind of short. They just kind of mold together for me when I listen, but we're on Consolation right now. Sky, Thoughts, Wind, Evision. She has such cute names for all of them, too. Mm-hmm. Just expanding, yep. <laughs> Expand with the canvas, you got it. Uh, if you need a second layer of white, everybody, just make sure it's very dry first. Mine is not dry. If you keep trying to do more layers as it's still a little bit wet, any little pop of color is gonna keep coming through. It's just gonna be frustrating, right? So just let it sit if you can. And then that way, once it's a little more dry, you can go over top with another clean layer of white and then nothing will be mixing as you go. You can see me waving this dry. It's not super necessary. It's just something for me to do and keep myself occupied. <laughs> uh, some people have hair dryers as they paint so that they don't have to do this. So that's another better idea rather than doing what I'm doing. Looking foolish with my hand waving. Again, this is just to distract me. Sometimes I need to distract myself or else I'll keep painting. I think a lot of you can relate. <laughs> if you're not doing something, you're like, ah, just a little more, a little more. Let's just put more there. Another layer, layer 50, layer 60. Yeah, it'll just go on and on. Can't do that. One more minute, let's leave one more minute and then we'll go on to our next uh, cacti. We're actually gonna move over to the third cacti next. I think it's nice to kind of do the two and then you have whatever's remaining for the last one there. You're not worried about like squishing this last one on the edge. I'd rather kind of have a bigger one here and then we can do a smaller one in the middle 
You can do whatever order you want, but that's just my technique. <clears throat> or use a pretty lace fan. Wouldn't that be fun, Heather? If I went like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time I needed to dry it, like a dramatic... <laughs> swishing it out. Very delicate and beautiful. <laughs> I can see that for me, honestly, Heather. <laughs> Absolutely. I keep joking that I want one of those dollar store ones, though, that are um, just battery operated. And they're just a small little fan like this size. It goes, and you can kind of like move it around to wherever it needs to, uh, wherever it needs to dry. One day. You mean bun merch painting fans? Poppy, imagine. Maybe when I'm researching merch towards later, I'll, uh, I'll look up to see if anyone does, uh, easy, like, fans. <laughs> does Vistaprint do fans? <laughs> Fan the devil out of it. Bob would. <laughs> that would work. Yeah, does Society6 have, uh, have either pretty lace fans or <laughs> electronic handheld fans that we can put a little bun logo on? <laughs> do merch out of? That would be so funny, Poppy. Painting fans. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, everyone. I'm going to move on to our uh, second cacti plant. Cactus plant? Cacti? Second cacti? Whatever. Uh, on the very right-hand side. So this is the one that I call the long boy. He's a very long cactus plant. I would say this is more like the traditional cactus that you're used to. Whenever you see them like in a painting in the desert, usually it's these very tall ones with the arms, kind of. So that's what we're doing next. Uh, for this one, you can see it's kind of a different shade of blue. Or, sorry, green, excuse me. It's kind of this bluish green shade. That's why I said blue by accident. So for this one, I was mixing uh, greens that had more blue than yellow in them. And in order to keep it going from light to dark, all I did is I made sure that the, lo that the uh, paint was very, very liquidy in the first little layer. And then what I did is I used less and less water to keep it coming darker and darker. Because in the previous, uh, yeah, previous cactus, we were using kind of a yellowy green, then adding more blue to make it darker. This time we're starting with the bluish green, just adding, uh, using less water to make it darker. It'll become a little bit thicker and therefore a little less transparent and therefore darker. So, uh, a mouthful. I'll, uh, slow down here. We have the medium round brush. What we're going to do with that is just mix together green on our plate by using blue and yellow. And we're starting with more blue this time. So we're trying to make a bluish green color right off the bat. Right off the bat. Love the idea though. I'd buy at least two. <laughs> One for each hand. <laughs> the long boy, yes! <laughs> I'm ready, I'm ready. Yeah, I think this is more the traditional cactus, personally. The long boy cactus. Very professional names here. So again, starting immediately with the bluish green. Blue and yellow, mostly blue. Uh, and starting- oh, battery. Keep mixing, I'll take a quick 20 seconds to change this. Time me, time me, it'll be less than 20. Less than 20. I'm exhausted! Bamboo lace with logo on the side. Oh yeah! That would be so pretty, Heather, honestly. I'd be into it. There, we're back. I'm exhausted! All right, I've got my paper towel ready. I suggest you get yours ready too, because once again, it's going to start drippy if we're using a very watered down paint. So again, this is the key. Bluish green, very, very watered down, very, very thin. Oops, and I'm going to zoom out just so we can see it perspective wise now that I've showed you the color. Uh, same thing, I'm going to start kind of wherever I want the pot to begin. And I think I want the pot to be a little taller based on my original reference here. So I'm going to start it a little higher up and I'm just going to sketch out first and then fill it in. I like to sketch out first and then uh, fill in with my color. So for this one, I'm doing a nice kind of tall shape. So it's kind of, it's going a little bit wider as it comes further up. So I'm starting by kind of tilting out to the left a little bit as I come up. Just before the top, I'm going to do a nice round top and then come back down. That's what I realized after looking at these. They all kind of go a little bit wider as they come up. Just a little bit. I'm actually going to even that out a little bit. That was a little dramatic. There we go. Just a wee bit. 
but nice and long. If that's long boy, what we named the light round one? This guy, he was the round boy. <laughs> the light round one, that makes him the round boy. <laughs> we didn't really have a name for this one though, unfortunately, so we need to think of that. So we have that first piece here, kind of right in the middle. And then I just add little arms. I describe them as arms, like he's saying hi to everybody. He's like, hey, hey, hey. So I'm gonna start about halfway up. I'm going to use my brush to kind of move out very dramatically. So a quick little curve out to the left. And then it comes up, curves around, back down. Same thing, I'm making it a little bit thinner as it gets uh, closer into the base here. It's very opposite of trees. Whenever we do trees, whenever we do branches, I'm always saying start thick, go thin. It's very opposite for this. Starting thin, getting thicker as we go, wider as we go. So I got one saying hi, we'll do another one saying hi on the other side. Let's go a little further down. Same idea. Something like that. And it looks like I did a third one, just a teeny little guy popping out saying, hello, it's me. I'm here too. There, that's good. Booby Trap, hey, so sad I'm missing this one. I wanna do this one for mom and mama's day. No worries, Booby. You can always uh, do it another time. I will keep this up on Twitch for as long as Twitch allows, and then it moves to YouTube, so no worries at all. But yes, also, hi, how's your evening going? Surely someone can make a lace of buns. I have seen lace of skulls. Anything is possible. Ooh. Drapey boy. I like that, Heather. <laughs> I think I was trying to call him like a hangy boy and I didn't like that. Drapey boy is kind of nice. Alright, so when you have your outline, same thing. Just as the same as the uh, original cacti here. Cactus. I get very mixed up with the plurals and all that. For cactus cacti. Uh, but yeah, I'm just filling this in with a very watery, very watery bluish green. Again, I keep saying very watery because the bluish green is a little bit of a darker color. So to make sure we get a nice transition from light to dark, we want to make sure this first layer is quite liquid and then that way it stays very transparent. Big drip there, I'll just leave it, that's fine. Again, I'm really just watching down here. So barely any paint on my brush. I'm just continuing to add water really and kind of moving the paint around that's already on there. That way it stays very, very light. And if you want to go like the extra mile, you could even start tapping right now. You can kind of tap off, see that? And leave some exposed canvas if you have a light background or a white background. That way you're starting off with a nice light little, uh, again, off center highlight there. Oh, there's a few there. I'm gonna catch real quick. Tap, tap, tap. There we go. Cool. Better than I was thinking, Saggy Boy. <laughs> what will we name him? <laughs> Drapey Boy, Hangy Boy, Saggy Boy. <laughs> Yeah, he, um, he's kind of his own little being, isn't he? Because uh, like round and long are both very like width, width and height things. And then we have like drapey, <laughs> saggy, I don't know. Raggy, who knows, who knows? He's like a raggedy boy almost, yeah. It's just kind of everywhere. It's just kind of flopping out. All right, so same steps as before. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just continuing to add a little bit more kind of blue-green on my brush. You could mix a little more blue in your green as you go, but mainly what I'm trying to do this time is I'm just trying to add more paint rather than more water. And then that way it's going to come off darker because it's going to be going on a little less transparent. So again, I'm still adding a little extra blue to keep that darker tone coming in. And same idea, I'm just working from my outsides going in. That's actually quite dark already, so I'm gonna water that down more and move it around. That's all you need to do. So again, I realized very quickly that was quite a dark, dark second shade there. It was a little bit too quick of a transition for my liking, so I just added more water. That made it a little more transparent, a little more liquidy. And now it's a good second shade here. Again, sticking mostly to the outsides, but working in a little bit. Mm 
Is the photo on the right yours? Yes, it is. It's a photo of my original painting. So it's right here. Yeah, so I made this Abby last week on Twitch. That's usually what I do. I usually paint um, upcoming tutorial designs. I design them on Twitch so you can kind of see my process of how I, how I put something together, right? I like to kind of talk with people as I do it because a lot of people who tune in during the week also like to follow along with tutorials so they give me you know, some advice here and there and say, oh, I like that or I don't like that. I'm very open to that if I'm making a tutorial design. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the whole whole idea, Abby. I want to make sure I'm using my own personal designs. I'm not reteaching somebody else's. So I end up making two of everything. <laughs> I have two versions of every single painting so far, at least. Sometimes more because I do um, I do private events as well. Oh, I just remembered something. <laughs> I gotta open that for later. Okay. Uh, yeah, I do private events as well. So sometimes I end up painting more than one version. I end up painting three or four as I reteach it, right? Big drip. I'll be going back to school next week, so I'll be watching. Oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense, Abby, all good. Yeah, I do evenings sometimes, I do weekends uh, often, I would say. By the way, if um, you find this is dry, just go ahead and add a second layer. You can do that at any time, by the way, if you're using white to cover up anything, just kind of monitor your own canvas, of course, and keep trying to remember to go back and check when things are dry so that you can keep adding more layers if you need to. So I find after two layers, it's good enough. You can see there's barely anything showing through. There might be a tiny bit of green here, but not enough, I think, that it will show through the orange. So that's fine for the two layers there. All right, I'm just continuing uh, this cactus here by adding another layer of a bluish green. Again, I'm not really adding more blue at this point. I'm just using less water. And then that way you can see it comes off darker. The more paint, the more it'll cover the canvas and therefore appear a little bit darker. So staying close to the edge. Going on the bottom here. Moving a little bit in, but not much. I want that transition, so I don't want to go too far in the middle. He's actually looking a little lighter than the original, so I will move it a little further in, but not much. My original is quite dark. Same thing, see it looked like I brought a little too far in, so I'm just gonna tap it away, it becomes light again. Yeah, Heather, yeah, I, uh, I try and keep up with it. Honestly, the last couple of weeks have been a little bit busier and I haven't been able to upload the last couple of weeks, but otherwise I, I keep pretty consistent, I think. I try my best, but I'm glad you enjoy that. I know a lot of people prefer YouTube. Uh, I understand why, it's just they can pause it, they can kind of go at their own pace, they can do the painting over multiple days that way. A little more relaxed for some. I personally love the whole live aspect though, that way people can ask questions obviously and we're all literally painting together. I think that's one of the coolest things that, you know, anyone who's painting here right now is all doing it together even though we're all in our different homes and all that, different locations. We're all having our art time right now at the same time, a nice Friday night or maybe it's Friday afternoon or Saturday morning for some, I don't know. But either way, it's all the same for everybody now. Mm hmm You have to allow the paint to break to make it beautiful. Maybe this is what Bob means. We're breaking the paint. I don't know. <laughs> breaking it up. Apparently, answer the how do you remove an earworm? You hate Twitter to be- Oh, dear. <laughs> Just get distracted by Twitter. Well, you found it. <laughs> you did it. Favorite artist? Like painting artist, artist in general. I like Bob Ross. 
I feel like that's a cop-out answer, but it's true. He's probably my favorite. <laughs> it's cool I do both. Yeah, thanks, Heather. Same! Yeah, yeah, I mean, I know. It's, it's hard to choose anybody else. There's many, many amazing artists out there. Um, but Bob is just way too inspiring for me to say anybody else. It's more about him and what he, uh, what his mission was and still is versus uh, his actual art. His art is beautiful, but more so what he stands for. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do one more layer. I just want to add a little bit more darkness to this. Same thing, just a little more paint, a little less water. Yes, I just went frantically rushing around the apartment because I smelled smoke some in the air. Oh no! That's a little surprising, Elvin. That's kind of out of season, <laughs> I would think. <laughs> Like, I know you can have bonfires any season. I don't typically see them in the winter time, though. <laughs> yeah, Abby, it's it's a sad story. But his legacy lives on. That's kind of why I said, like, his mission continues to be. Like, I know he's no longer with us, but the Bob, like, brand is still very alive and well, and it does very good things for cancer research, donating. Um, that's why Bob's on Twitch still. They just play his old videos, and then any revenues, I'm pretty sure, go to cancer research. So that's very good. So yeah, even though he's not here with us, it's still like his whole, his whole mission is still very much alive. Just encouraging people to try painting and try art, so. That's pretty neat. It's a pretty big impact to be able to do that after passing away, still having that going. Inspiring so many others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Elvin, that's just like, question marks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the purpose? Like maybe they're burning something in particular. I don't, I don't know. I don't see it being like a, a party. <laughs> also, co oh, yeah, I guess it's outside, but hopefully that doesn't encourage a crowd gathering. Oh man, that's a, that's a lot of question marks for me <laughs> hearing that. Okie dokie. <laughs> exactly, Hokey. Yeah, this was not recent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, th I would say the brand is like alive, more alive and well than any of those 20 years. I feel like it still continues to grow. Like the amount of people who knew who Bob was five years ago when I'd asked them versus now. Oh yeah, not comparable. All over Netflix, all over YouTube. Again, whoever's managing all of that, well done. His face is everywhere, but not in a bad way, you know? I think, I think. All right, so yeah, this is turning out a little lighter than my original. So if you like more of my original, I would just keep adding the darker colors coming further in. But I really like the, uh, again, the transition we're seeing here from the very dark to the very light. So I'm just gonna add a teeny bit more and then keep it there. His son, well, yeah, his son does paint, actually. Oh, uh, you mean who manages? I'm not sure who manages what his estate, you would say. I really don't know. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're all guessing his son, Steve. I'm sure he's involved. And I mean, as I'm sure you know, if you've, uh, if you've watched The Joy of Painting, he paints too. He's, uh, he's been featured on The Joy of Painting here and there when Bob was, uh, I wanted to take a little break. He was just like, here's Steve. <laughs> now he paints the best mountains in the world. <laughs> so that's fun. Yeah, I really don't know who's involved in it. It just must be a big team, right? I mean, I can't imagine if it is good for Steve. I just can't imagine it's all Steve, like setting up Twitch, setting up the YouTube. Like that stuff is, it's all very clean, polished, Netflix deals, you know? Again, if it is Steve, grats, but <laughs> I feel like he's getting a little help. Here on Twitch as well. Oh, absolutely, Heather. That was um, one of my first Twitch experiences, actually. I know Bob is on every weekend now for a whole marathon, like every single weekend, but I, um, I popped on Twitch, I think my second time due to the Bob Ross thing. I think first was Twitch Plays Pokemon. I might be mixing up timelines. But I wasn't, I, I didn't used to peruse Twitch daily. It was more so just like if a special event was going on and I heard uh, about the Bob Ross thing, I guess Bob Ross, um, 
uh, his team again started up a channel for his birthday, I think it was. I think they were like counting down the days for his birthday and they were playing the whole, like all of the Joy of Painting episodes and they timed it so that the last one would land on his birthday. Um, and that was a huge event from what I remember. I don't remember the viewership, um, but I think at the time it was, it was very substantial. Everyone tuning in just to see that first little run through of all of the episodes and a lot of the first little memes from his Twitch channel came to be there with the whole saved and ruined thing. I remember seeing that for the first time and I was like, oh my God, this is so funny. <laughs> yeah, Rip Devil was there. Yeah, it was all the little, all the little jokes were really forming at that time. I thought it was so, so wholesome and great. Ulu. The inaugural run of Bob was like 5k. Oh, really? Am I totally off, Todd? That seems low. But maybe at the time it was higher? I don't know. Compared to what they were used to like years and years and years ago. I kind of remember it being way higher than that, but it's just because my numbers are probably skewed because I'm used to different numbers now. Ooh, 74. Look at that. <laughs> Cabin and Cacti, hello. All right, same thing if you got a little messy, you just put some white over top. I'm just grabbing a big blob of white, putting that on top. I will put a second coat later. There we go. Michigan, they run a 5K called Run for the Trees. Oh, that is a Bob Ross themed 5K. It's to raise money for the state parks. You get a medal and a t-shirt. Everything is Bob Ross themed. No way! <laughs> Sign me up! I just want a little Bob Ross medal. And I want to add to my t-shirt collection. Run for the trees. I love that. I'm not a runner though. 5k is a lot for me. <laughs> All purple. This was in 2015. Right, okay. Yeah, see Todd, I'm wondering what 5k meant at that point. 5.6 million people watch Bob over the course of the nine day. Oh dang, see that's a lot. That's an impressive number. Oh yeah, right now, Abby, yeah, yeah. Bob is on, yes, right now. <laughs> he always pulls the thousands, thousands of people. He deserves it. <laughs> yeah, on Twitch, I gotcha. Everyone, I'm just giving an extra minute in case you're working on the long boy cactus. Mine became a little thick too. I'm noticing a few differences. Mine is not long and slender. He's a little, a little thicker. A little more of a well-fed cactus, but that's okay. He still get the same idea here with the length. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're watching both, Abby. That's funny. This is before he had, uh, we had an k stream. Yeah, absolutely, Todd. Yeah, I'm just wondering if 5k would have meant like he was top of Twitch at the time, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't, uh, again, I wasn't super active around that time. I just knew the Bob Ross and I knew Twitch plays Pokemon. I think that one was like 100k, am I wrong? I know Twitch Plays Pokemon was record-breaking. I don't know about Bob Ross, though. Oh, I'm not a runner either, but I had to do it. Yeah, absolutely purple. I'd, I'd force myself to the medal last year. It was virtual, was a paint palette. Oh my God, we can do it virtually? How do we do that? Oh. Bob Ross Marathon. I'm putting this up for later. How fun. Thanks, engraved. These plants look uh, look amazing. Oh, thank you, thank you, plant friends, yeah. I almost wanted to put faces on them, honestly, engraved. Maybe I will at the end of the tutorial once I get done all of my stuff that I have already here. Little uwu faces. Yeah, hokey. It just keeps growing, you know? <laughs> he would 100% have been the front page. It was kicking off Twitch Crib. Oh, was it? Oh, wow. You should do it collectively. I'm down. I guess I should say run, not marathon, because everything is popping up for Twitch when I say marathon. Happy little tree 5k race. <gasps> oh my gosh. I'll read about this in a second. We'll get our uh, next plant started and then I'm gonna research more about this run. No, it closed March 1st. Dang, I was just about to see. Dang. Next year. I'll read more in a second. All right, we're going to go ahead and do our third plant. Third plant, everybody. So again, the third plant is a little bit more of a 
not difficult one, just a little trickier in terms of how we're laying the paint. So I'll describe again. What I did is I did the green first, and then I put this kind of red terracotta peachy color um, all around the green. Because again, it's hard to stack watercolors, especially of different shades. It's not like acrylic where it's gonna cover up, it's gonna make it muddy. So what I did is I put the green first and then we'll put the, uh, yeah, the pot around it. So once again, it's gonna be a little scarier, kind of choosing a, just a random spot to float and uh, put your little leaves. You're gonna have to trust yourself about where you're putting it and then you'll fit the pot in somehow later. Um, what I did is I did two shades of green. I did a little bit of like light green and a little bit of dark green. You can kind of see these two strings are different. Light green, dark green. I've got a light green here and a dark green here. So let's just start with light green. It's a little bit of a safer, safer shade, I guess. Uh, so lots of yellow, tiny bit of blue. And I am still watering this down, but I'm not watering it down as much. You can see we definitely want to be a little more in control, right? We have these little dots of green. There's not a whole lot of drippies from these. You can still be messy with them, but I just wouldn't want there to be drips, I think, on every single one. So. Try to use a little bit of water in the paint, but not much. That way you still get that transparent look, but it's a little more controlled. So it's not like zipping everywhere on your plate, but it's still a little bit liquidy. Okay, so I'm gonna choose again, just like wherever I want my pot to be or my plant to start. I'm gonna put it, yeah, right in the middle and kind of flare it out a little bit. These are very wide, so I didn't leave a lot of room here personally, but that's okay. And all I'm doing is I'm doing just, just doing small little strokes with my brush. Um, I feel a sneeze coming on just as a warning. Uh, I'm using the tip of my brush. I'm kind of pressing, moving a little, and then releasing. And that way you get just a small little brush stroke. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of doing little vines, right? I'm kind of doing these little, little dotted lines of leaves. So I'm starting in the middle. I like to kind of come up and out. So they all kind of curve up and then they come down very messy again like they're not all in a line you can kind of move them left and right a little bit zigzag them a bit again just kind of using the tip of my brush this is the medium round pressing maybe stroking a bit and they come off as little uh little ovals almost ovals they're they're even kind of leaf shaped you can kind of see tips on them there so a nice little shape so that's one little string i'm gonna go like maybe over here so this one comes up and down they kind of wiggle on the way down. They don't need to be in a perfectly straight line. Maybe I'll make one come up here and then rest maybe like close by or beside. This one's hanging very long. You can do a couple that just kind of come down a little bit. Maybe it stops there. And this is all with the light green so far. I've just done like three or four. I've done four little strings of leaves right now. Last year was the first time. Oh, okay, purple, I see. I think they'll continue to do this uh, since it's been very successful. Always starts in January. Okay, we know for next year. That's so sad that it's a uh, March 1st closure. Cause they're all happening in April. For Earth Day, oh. Lots of different like locations for if it's COVID friendly, I guess. Oh wait, this is 2020 I'm looking at. Where's 2021? Thanks, Abby. Sounds good, Magic. See you later. There's a 5k shirt on eBay, but no medals currently. <laughs> I wouldn't buy it. I'd want to, uh, I'd want to participate for sure. Ooh, a metallic gouache. Ooh. I've looked into metallic, um, metallic watercolors. I've been very tempted to try it. Try a little bit of those for bullet journal. I think that would be fun. All right, whenever you're happy with uh, your little light green plants, you can do some darker green ones. So once again, I'm just going back to my plate, mixing a little bit more blue into my green. Same thing, it's a little bit watery. Not the most watery, but a little bit. 
And same thing, I'm just kind of starting from the same spot that all my little vines came from. And I'm just going to add some more dark green. Again, using the tip of my brush, just kind of tapping or brushing, kind of zigzagging on the way down or keeping them straight, doesn't matter. Maybe even longer. Uh, let's do a small one maybe here. And maybe one more here. So it looks a tiny bit cluttered, but that's okay. Once we add the uh, black outlines, it'll help kind of distinguish all the uh, all the little green green specks there. The green leaves. Add even more. I'm gonna do one more on this side. There we go. I think it looks nice, kind of uh, very full like that personally. So again, I did like four or five rows or vines of each. I'll zoom out just so you can see the whole painting again. Again, the main difference as well I'm seeing is that these guys got quite wide. This is going to be a little bit more tight, but that's okay. It'll really fill up the whole canvas that way. As a reminder, if you're using white to cover up anything, you might want to check if anything's dry. Mine is dry there, so I'll do a second coat over there now. And that way I'm all ready for the pot that's coming up soon. Oops. It's cozy, not cluttered. Thanks, Heather. I appreciate it. It's a cozy plant. I like that. I like that notion a lot. It's a cozy little area. There, again, so you can see a tiny bit of a green tinge. I'm going to leave that there. Uh, I'm going to hope that the yellow covers it. And if it doesn't, I can always just use white to kind of clean it up a little bit more. Nice, Abby, yeah. So again, I'll point out, like, at the end, I'm going to outline everything, but it really looks nice not outlined, too. It's a nice it's a nice effect that you can get it a little bit messy, still see the shapes, though. I'm just curious how many people are not going to outline it. Because I was going back and forth about it when I was creating this. All right, one last minute if you're doing uh, this middle plant, and then we're going to do some little pots to house these plants. Right now, they're just floating in midair. We need to put them in something. Don't make mistakes, just happy accidents. You know Bob well, yes, that's one of his best quotes. One of his most well-known, for sure. Definitely. So yeah, as usual, if I didn't say before, you're welcome to change up colors, of course. I kind of chose warmer colors for my pots. I do an orange and then this kind of like reddish peach color and then a yellow, uh, whatever you want though. Maybe you have a different background color. You can kind of choose contrasting colors to that. It doesn't matter. It'll all be up to you. Doing two, so I'm gonna outline one. Oh, fun, Terry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like a nice little pear. I get it. That's a good idea. Remember how free clouds are? They just lay around the sky all day long. That's actually part of our little Bob quotes, Abby. Have you ever seen that where we do the Bob quote command? There's one. We definitely have the cloud one though. I've seen that one pop up randomly. <laughs> All right, everybody, I'm going to move on to some pots for our plants now. So again, you can choose whatever colors you like, but I'm doing orange and I'll do this kind of like pinkish peach color, which is a little two toned because we see inside of this pot. And then we're going to do this yellow one here. Otherwise, yeah, pretty simple, straightforward. They're all again, very like simple shapes, in my opinion, a little bit messy. I would say I keep them maybe a tiny bit cleaner. Uh, the outline will really help clean them up, but yeah, there's some drips here and there, so no worries if it drips a little bit. Uh, if you want to keep with the colors I'm doing, I'll start with orange. Start with orange. So I've got my medium round brush. I'll be using this one a lot, honestly. Uh, and I'm going to make an orange on my plate. I'm going to start by making a really, really light orange. So just like we did with the cacti, um, we'll be starting with lighter colors and making them darker. So we're starting with a light orange so we can get that as our base color and keep it nice and light on this middle right hand side. And then we'll add more red to make it darker and darker orange. Lynn, I see you there. Welcome in. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Oh, am I saying it? Bonsoir. Welcome in. Happy Friday. Lindy, Madi, Macri, Jody. Vendredi. Vendredi. You're fine, Lynn. You're fine. Don't worry. We still got lots of painting to do. How are you this evening? 
Bonsoir. Excellent. Light orange. Lots of yellow, a little bit of red. And again, I'm kind of watering it down. Not a whole lot. I want to keep a little more in control. Good. That's good. Lynn, what did you get up to today? Were you working, I assume, because it was Friday? Noodle Noodle 101. Hello. Hi there. How's it going? We have a noodle on this channel. His name is Chicken Noodle. There's the Chicken Noodle. <laughs> Welcome in, Noodle Noodle. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm leading a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial right now. Once you have your first color, again, that light orange, mostly yellow, little bit of red, we can start just by kind of, just like usual, uh, carving out our shape here, outlining our shape. So for this pot, what I did is I did a horizontal line, which turns into a very long horizontal rectangle. So it's kind of the lip of the pot. It's interfering with my little drip, but that's okay. I need to overlap my drip there. Noodle, thanks for the official follow. I'll keep chatting in a second. Um, I'm doing a step-by-step -step tutorial right now and some people are painting along, so I kind of go back and forth between teaching and chatting. So feel free to chat in the meantime, but I'll start chatting with you in a second. So I have that little lip. Again, it's horizontal lines. I kind of, um, I will say, I kind of tilt the edges in a little bit. It's not really rectangle with vertical lines. I kind of tilt them in. So I tilt into the right, into the left. I like that, uh, that shape there. Having the edges a little bit more uh, angled because they match the pot. So the pot, what we do is we kind of leave that lip a little bit longer. And then what we do is we do some angled lines that start a little further in from the edge of the lip and they come down over, down and over to the right. This one comes down and over to the left. So they start to come in, they start to kind of pinch in. And then before they meet, we're just going to make them meet with a horizontal line. So that's the first pot, just a very basic shape in my opinion, nothing fancy. So again, that lip on top and then just uh, angling down, angling down, coming across. When you have that outlined, fill her in. So this is an orange. I know it looks yellow, but there is a little bit of red in here. That's what makes it more golden tone. So this is my base color and then I'll make it more and more orange. The secret to doing anything is believing that you can do it. Anything that you believe you can do strong enough, you can do anything as long as you believe. That's in our quotes too. Abby, you know them all. Oh, not working today, Lynn. Okay, nice day off, I hope. Good. I hope you're feeling well. I hope it wasn't due to headaches or anything. I hope it was just a nice, calm day off. Today I had to take care of insurance because we had tree. Oh no, fall in our pool. Oh no, when was that, Lynn? I don't think, uh... oh wait, was that like due to the thunderstorm? I had a thunderstorm, I think it was yesterday. It was so short lived though. Oh, okay, so it was last night. Bad wind last night, pardon today. Oh boy, okay, yeah, I didn't get anything today. But yesterday I remember like hearing thunder and I was shocked. I was like, what is that? It's winter, what's going on? And then we had kind of like sleet and then a couple, couple thunder, lightning thunder, but barely any. It was over within 10 minutes, I would say. Yeah, last night, oh dear. So everybody, I'm just going back to my plate. I'm just grabbing a little more red, adding it to my orange. Again, same idea as the cactus. I'm just making my orange darker by adding more red and I'm going to start to go from my edges and work my way in. Again, this is still watery paint. It's not the wateriest. Again, you can see the drips here, but it's still a little bit more controlled, I would say. Starting from the edge, working in. Again, I kind of like my highlight to be off center, so I'm kind of moving it a little to the right. I'm laying down this orange and then I'll keep some water on my brush and start to blend it around a little bit more. Nate, hello, nice to see you. Sorry if I didn't catch you there. I'm uh, tutorial mode, so I'm teaching and chatting, but really nice to see you. How's it going? You, you heard me just talking about Ontario weather there. I don't know if you got, uh, that, that weird thunderstorm. It's just such a weird season for thunderstorms, I guess. Um, but yeah, I was just talking to Lynn about that. Lynn is in Quebec, so she, I guess, got the aftermath of it. 
Anyway, hope you're well, Nate. What have you been up to? And I don't have a job, so not working just at home. Are you still not doing travel agent stuff, Lynn? Did that change? I know it's been obviously slow. For some reason, I thought you were still doing uh, a little bit there, though. Let me know if I'm incorrect. So yeah, water, watery brush, I'm just moving things around. Oh, Peepo Juice, where is he? <laughs> I think it's capital P. Capital J. No, it's not. Oh no, what is it? Is it not? Oh, I misspelt it. It is, though. There he is. <laughs> Thank goodness. I was like, where's my boy? Where is he? <laughs> We've been getting nailed with wind. Okay, we got put into a gray zone here. Okay. We, I think we just upgraded to red. Upgraded? I don't know, Nate. I don't know how you're treating this thing, but I honestly just don't really go out anyway. I'm not really taking advantage of what's open or not. I've just really been staying in the whole time. So gray to red to orange is all just the same to me. <laughs> it's just like, I'm still staying home. I'm just still getting groceries only. <laughs> anyway, sorry to hear. I guess that means things are getting a little worse where you are. They've, they've switched it around on us a couple times. We went from gray to red and I think we're back? I don't know. I don't know. They're really changing their mind every other day. It's hard to keep up with, but again, I don't mind because I'm truly just, just home. <laughs> uh, everyone, I'm now adding a little bit more red to my orange. I'm just doing one more layer of orange here to really get, you can see that dark edge going. A little more red. Same idea, maybe using a little less water. So again, it's a little more controlled, a little thicker. And really getting those edges. I really like playing with the lip as well. You can kind of use this color to help separate the lip from the uh, bottom of the pot. See how I just brought it all the way across? It helps the viewer kind of see that top edge a little bit better. Uh, yeah, still travel agent. Right, of course, Lynn, yeah, okay. All right, I just want to make sure you didn't lose your job there, but I understand it's pretty much that you're not working anyway. I gotcha. I got worried for a second that maybe you were like out out. Where's your boy? <laughs> yeah, I keep him off for the tutorial just so he's not too distracting, but he's still on my other screens, don't you worry. And he's still obviously in the chat. Love the way the pot cactus is liking the paint and the drippy. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, I purposely do it. I'm purposely trying to grab a little more water here and there, Lynn, and kind of like press. That's how you purposely get drippies. You're just pressing along in the paint. You can even use your brush to kind of guide a little bit and then press water. Watch, and then you press water and it'll kind of follow where you guided it, yeah. I like them here and there. I don't like them too, too long, but nice and subtle like that. <laughs> subtle. <laughs> anyway, I like the drippies too. Thank you. Seamsies. Mm-hmm. Windy last evening. Didn't realize it was that windy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, glad you got that sorted today, Lynn. Oh, okay, we good scare with the noise. Oh, of course. Call insurance or house. Of course, good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, subtle derp. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, look at that subtle drip. <laughs> Goes to bottom of canvas, okay. <laughs> that derp is the cutest, wait a sec. <laughs> oh, okay. Alex like Wubby Alex, I gotcha, I gotcha. That is the cutest. I didn't realize she had such cute emotes. Oh, oh, she got more Pokemon. Oh, she's got a Pog Magic Carp. Oh, I'm gonna check her out later. I knew she streamed, but I've never checked her out. I just see her on Wubby's channel. Okay, I'm gonna move over to another pot, everybody. So again, your choice of color, but I'm gonna go over to this one. I'm, I'm just leaving this one for last. I'm gonna keep the same order here. I'm doing this kind of yellow color. Um, so it's just using plain yellow paint. You can add maybe a tiny bit of red to it as we get to the outsides to make it more golden. Um, but for now, I'm just using plain yellow and lots of water. So this is where some people were saying, hey, do you think we'll need two, two little uh, stations of water here? This might be where you wanna clean your water or get cleaner water because we're using plain yellow, but I'm just risking it with my dirty water. It's looking kind of green. Uh, we'll see how it turns out with my green water using yellow paint. But yeah, still medium round brush, 
mixing water into yellow. <clears throat> Pikachu's my favorite. He's pretty cute. <laughs> oh, of course, she needs the shock Pikachu. That's perfect. Wow. <laughs> I feel like that guy's probably all over with different emotes. That one specifically. Yeah, I like that Magikarp, though. That's hilarious. The Pog Magikarp. It's little tongues hanging out. Yeah, I don't know what content content she would stream. Maybe she games? I assume it's not as chaotic as Wubby's stream. It's probably exhausting for her. She wants to chill during her stream. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. I do a little bit of a horizontal lip to begin with. This one I do keep rectangular. You can see I don't uh, curve the sides in or tilt the sides at all. I'm just keeping it a little bit shorter. And still vertical on the outsides. A little bit shorter, not much shorter. Still want to make sure we have enough width to keep this cactus safely in there. She does? Oh, interesting. Okay. Are you doing a new volcano? Yes, Lynn. Yes, this is Volcano Plate 2.0. He's been going strong since uh, January, so he's about two months old now. My baby volcano is about two months old. In human years, that's... Uh, how old? Like 30 months old. It's like, he's almost three. He's almost three years old in, in human years. <laughs> he's growing so quickly. <laughs> that's funny though, Nate. I know they do that on Wubby's channel sometimes, but I didn't know that's uh, what she'd be doing too. I know they do magic cards too, from what I've seen. Okay, from this, uh, from this lip, everybody, I'm just kind of coming down with two vertical lines. I'm going to come... A little further down because we have more room to cover. I want to kind of end it around the same horizontal plane as the orange, but because we started the cactus a little further up, we're gonna need it a little longer. And I did a little bit of a fancy bottom. I did kind of uh, two lines that, uh, yeah, angle in and in right before the bottom and then a horizontal line at the very bottom. So in, in, horizontal. So it's kind of like a really edgy, curve bottom you know what I mean it's not it's not a curve but when you put it all together it looks like it's kind of a U shape in a way but just with straight lines that's all and then you can fill it in Jen is here hi hello how's it going Jen how much does it weigh right now um I haven't weighed it in a hot minute Elvin but I should the other one weighed just over five pounds I don't know what this guy's at though I've taken a few pictures of its growth and uh, a few pictures of it weighed uh, on a scale, but I honestly haven't done that in a little bit, so I should do that. I'll try and remember after stream. If not, maybe I can do it tomorrow if I'm reminded. <laughs> Aaron, how much does it weigh? I'll, I'll pull out the scale tomorrow <laughs> while I'm live. Same thing, everyone. You can kind of tap if you want to leave a little bit of a blank spot. See, and that's the, that's kind of the green showing through. So that was my, whenever I was trying to cover up the green. So that's what happens. It might kind of show through a little bit. So if I want, I could add more white there, like a nice plain white. Put it on top, like a not watery white is what I mean when I say plain. Not very good wording, but <laughs> like a thicker white is what I should say. You can tap that on top to get rid of it if you're seeing any sort of green or whatever. Same thing again, it's either if you have what I had, just a little bit of a layer of green, or if you're using a background color, you can just use thicker white paint to get rid of it. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Going well, good. Any plans for the eve? I saw you post a date for your cooking stream. I don't know if I can make it, unfortunately, but I still am getting the ingredients so that I can make strombolis another time, because I've never had. I'm very intrigued by them. Okay, if you're following this uh, this pot color, everybody, I'm just going to do more yellow on my brush now, more yellow with less water. So I'm still mixing with a little bit of water, but just less now. And you can see it doesn't necessarily get darker, it's just kind of like brighter. Orf, orficral. Welcome in. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. I'm doing a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial right now, but feel free to ask any questions you like. I go back and forth between teaching and chatting, so anything you like in the chat. 
I will talk to you eventually. So yeah, you can see brighter yellow. It's not necessarily darker quite yet. It's just getting brighter versus more transparent where we laid it down before. So again, same thing, sticking to the edges, moving a little bit in with a little bit more water on your brush. And then I will be finishing that off with more of a golden yellow. I'll just give a quick half minute before I do that. Ah, yes, there you are. If you have any questions, again, let me know. Otherwise, enjoy YouTube. <laughs> it's so nice to see your hand in HD. HD hands, HD paper towel that's all messy, HD brush. <laughs> Ooh, ah. <laughs> thanks, Lynn. I really like it, too. <laughs> oh, thanks, Lynn. All good. Have you painted recently or you haven't had a lot of time for that with the... Uh, the whole insurance thing, that must have been a lot. Yeah, it's all, it's it's the smoothness, Lynn. I just love the smoothness of my hand moving. <laughs> Honestly, I could look at it all day. All right, for those looking to do a last layer to this yellow, again, what I'm doing is I'm mixing more of a golden yellow now. So technically it's a little bit of red into your yellow, mixing it together. It makes it more of a dirty golden yellow. And you can use that just around the edges. Again, maybe a little less water, and then that way it can stay a little bit more um, thick, a little more bright. Oops, that's a little too orange in my opinion. I'm gonna mix that a little bit more. Maybe something like that. See how it's kind of just like dirty, kind of golden looking? So this is a lot lighter of a pot, but still pretty. I like the contrast with the bluish green to the yellow, and that's why I chose that. Did a little painting of a gnome. Oh, cute, Lynn! Oh, that's nice and early, too. All ready for next week. Very cute. Yeah, I'm not really doing a St. Patrick's Day theme painting, personally. Oopsie. I keep doing that. I keep grabbing more red. Uh, yeah, personally, but I'm sure those are really cute ones to do. That's sweet. I'm freaking out about this middle pot and you're keeping us in suspense. Ah! <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a different one, again, with the whole, like, going around the leaves. Maybe that's what I'm trying to do, Court. Just the suspense. We need more suspense on this channel. I should play some, like, suspense movie music as we come up to the, uh, to the final steps. <laughs> Alright, that's the yellow. I'll keep about a minute more and then I'll end the suspense and I'll go to this, uh, middle pot here. <laughs> See how that goes. <laughs> cool cat. This week relaxing a lot in you. Yes, absolutely. Next week I'm gonna paint. Okay, okay. The um, the jellyfish type. Mm -hmm. Rainbow jellies. I was showing them off a little bit earlier. Do, 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 do. Jellyfish, yeah. The underwater rainbow. Yeah, I showed them off a little earlier. I'm sure you saw on Facebook, though. Ooh, new colors? Which ones? Ooh, you can use all the colors for next week's. Oh, boy. Any and all colors will be good. Margarita, like a bright lime, beautiful. Just like for this though, ooh. That'll be nice for the jellyfish though. There is a very bright green in the little jellyfish like tail area, but also for that second jellyfish in the bottom right, we use that beautiful bright green. Margarita, oh, you should make yourself a margarita too. Sip on a margarita, paint with margarita, beautiful. Beautiful pairing. Bought it for next week's. Ah, okay, okay. That's smart. Yeah, any and all bright colors for next week is very smart. Okay, let's end the suspense. Let's get to this middle pot here. <laughs> yes, I'm saving it for last. So the middle pot um, is more of this kind of like reddish peachy color, I would say. Uh, we have, here, I'll zoom in again. And again, we kind of have two tones. I uh, make it a little darker up in here. That's where the pot where the plant is coming out of. So it's like the dark inside. So I'll be using a little bit of blue in my color to make it darker, but uh, that's that's for a little later. For now, we're just gonna make this main kind of red, um, red peachy color, I would say. So I'm using my medium round brush. And I'm mixing. 
mixing red, I'm mixing a tiny bit of yellow into the red, and I'm mixing white into the red. And it makes this kind of peachy shade. So red, tiny bit of yellow. We learned that red and yellow make orange, so to keep it peachier, we want to make sure there's more red in the mixture. And then the key as well is adding a little bit of white. The white will help uh, tone it down a bit, make it more peachy. Same thing, I'm watering it down a little bit, but not too much because I want to keep a little more controlled again with this pot especially because we're kind of moving around our leaves. And I'm going to first outline our pot and then fill it in. So the outline, I'm first going to start with a nice oval, a nice horizontal oval. That's going to be the opening of the pot here. So I'm trying to do a very light outline without intersecting with my green leaves. So you can see I'm just kind of doing small little dots, small little lines wherever I can to kind of map out that oval shape. See it kind of forming right there. And as long as this, as long as the plant is starting inside that oval shape, that's really all you need to worry about. It doesn't matter if there's green plants going outside of the oval shape or inside, as long as where all those little vines are starting. So mine's starting here, it's inside, that's fine. And then for the bottom part, what you're doing is you're going on the outsides of the ovals and kind of carving down and then over. It's kind of like we're doing the bottom of this pot a little bit, just kind of a little, little less deep. So starting on the edge of this oval, I'm doing an, a line cur- uh, yeah, not curving, and it's just angling in like this. There's maybe a little bit of a curve, but not much. It's more so just angling down. This one on this side is angling down. See them both coming down, and then I'll come across to meet them up wherever you want. Again, I would say this one's a little uh, less deep. It's a little more shallow than the other ones. I'll be able to call my painting them Jelly Margarita. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Margarita Jelly is a nice ring to it. Mm -hmm. I'll see you, Terry. Uh, have you some time for supper peace, everyone? P.S. I had so much fun with the gouache. Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Definitely be doing it again. Very cool, very cool. Sima, I see you there. Thank you for resubscribing. Eight months? What's going on? Hello! Quick little shout out for you! Check out Truman if you haven't, he streams! Metro 2033 Redux! Hello, welcome in! Okay, now that I've got it mapped out, it's the same as usual everybody, I'm just filling in with this peachy shade. The only difference of course being you want to be a little more careful because we're trying our best to go around our green. I'll try and zoom in for you here so you can really see. It honestly isn't too tough in my opinion. It just takes some patience. So if you can, uh, you know, kind of zone out in this, this process and just, it's kind of like you're, you're coloring in a coloring book, right? You're just going nice and slow. If you overlap a little here and there or leave a little bit of a white edge, that's totally fine. You're not going to notice those little details in this painting because it's supposed to be a messier painting. So just take your time with it. I'm adding more water to my brush, kind of moving that paint around. Once again, trying to keep it a little bit lighter on this kind of centered right-hand side. Miss Rags, thank you for following and welcome in. I'm just doing a step-by-step -step acrylic tutorial right now. But you're welcome to ask any questions and chat in the chat. I kind of go back and forth between teaching and chatting, but hello. Hope you're having a good Friday. And I will fill in this top part, even though we're going to add a darker shade. I just like to do like a base everywhere first, and then we'll add our little shading as we go as we have done before. So again, you can see, still looks a little messy and that's okay, that's all part of the process. But I did my best to keep those green leaves a little more open. Yeah, I think Terry's gone, I think she's gone, but I'm excited that she used gouache. I've been really tempted to use it personally, just haven't got there. Do -do -do. <laughs> okay, where are we here? Sima. Oh, thanks for shouting. You're welcome. Always, always. I'll see you follow you on the tutorial. It's been some... Yeah, absolutely, Lynn. Miss Rags, nice to see you in chat. Hello, welcome in. <laughs> How's it going? Do you paint at all, Miss Rags? Or are you just interested in uh, checking this out a little bit? Everyone, I'm adding a little more paint to my brush. I would say I'm adding a tiny bit more red. 
and using less water. So again, same idea. We're just adding in the darker version of the color we were using. You can see how it looks a lot darker because there's less water on the brush. I'm going to keep on the edges. I'm going to bring it a little more in the middle, but not much. And then again, we'll kind of water it back down if I want to blend it in a little bit more. So I'm just using a watery brush and moving it around. That's kind of a nice transition already, honestly, a little more subtle, but I will be doing a third shade. The third shade will be this very dark color, which I'll do very lightly on these outsides, but more so in the middle here to add a lot more shading uh, again inside the pot. So impressed by the small amount of paint you took. I'm mixing well. Yeah. Oh, okay, Lynn. Well, especially with this one, I mean, it's great because it's so watered down. You truly only need a tiny bit of paint here and there. So this is a good one if you feel like you want to practice the idea of not using a lot of paint. Just little, little bits. Like I, these are my blobs. And I would say it's way too much even for this painting. It was such a small amount needed. You're using gouache today too. <laughs> Purple says, it's uh, an experience. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I'm just not experienced with gouache. So I couldn't tell you purple if it would work out with this. My guess was yes. Because I think it's uh, it's another paint that you can like kind of liquefy a little bit, but yeah, I really don't know. <laughs> you do dabble in painting, cool, Miss Rags. Do you do acrylics or any other mediums? <laughs> I try, Lynn. I just just lots of practice, you know. All right, so what I do to darken up uh, this peach color is I actually add a tiny bit of blue to it, and I mean a tiny amount. I mixed in a little. You can see how purple it got already. I'm gonna add red to bring it back a little bit, but. The blue, as I already kind of spoiled for you, it makes it a little more of a purple shade. So that way it looks like a nice dark version of our color. It's not too brown or anything. It's not too, too dark. But adding again a little bit of blue to our mixture will make more of a purple. And I think that matched well with what we had going here. So again, I'm using uh, much less, I would say much less water at this point, just so I'm really, really careful. I'm just starting to fill in that oval that we started with. So it's the inside of the pot. It makes it look like it's a lot darker and a lot more shaded on the inside there. And I did add a tiny bit, a tiny bit to the outside just to darken up a little bit, but barely any. You can see it's uh, just kind of hitting the very, very sides here, maybe the corners. And that's about all. Just add a little more shading in there. I will zoom out so you can see everything put together now. There's that. Why can't I click me? Why can't I click me? Where's my painting cam? Oh, there it is. Okay. Come on over. Way too small. There we are. See, he fits in there. He's not as big as the original, but he, he fits. He fits, so he sits. Wash worked, uh, would work nicely. Oh, you think so, Alvin? Yeah, Terry was saying yes. Purple was saying it's an experience. <laughs> we will, it remains to be seen what that means, but an experience. Oh, mostly watercolors in some gouache. I'm dying to try some acrylics. Oh, interesting. Oh, some acrylic, acrylic gouache? Oh, it's like a hybrid? Okay, well, I, I mostly work in acrylics. I'm not sure if you clicked on me because this looks like watercolors. It's technically acrylics. I'm just using it in kind of a watercolor type way. So that's very interesting. Cool, cool. Matte watercolor seems to be perfect. For some reason, I'm just having a difficult time. I see. Blending too much. Okay. That might be it, uh, purple. I think if, it's, if the paint is removing, it might be a little too much water, is my guess. Again, I'm not familiar with that medium, but if that's what, if that was happening with my acrylics, I would just reduce the water. I'd use more paint, kind of thicken it up. I think that would help for sure. But yeah, exactly. Waiting for things to dry and then maybe layering more, perhaps. I love that one, Abby. Oh, I haven't heard that one. That last one, that's Bob Ross again? Interesting. Okay, we have uh, one more kind of messy step to go. And then, uh, well, that's not true. We have a couple little steps. We have a messy step. We got the blooms to add. And then it's going to be a lot of outlining. Just to give everyone a heads up. Let's do the uh, non-messy step and then we can get really messy. We have one more step before messy. We have the little blooms. So we have some pink blooms on the 
uh, first cactus we did and we have some purple blooms on the second one so we can add those again those are quite messy as well but we'll clean them up with some lines so the first bloom on the left is just a nice pink so I'm using my medium round brush again. You could switch to a small if you want at this point, everyone, but I'm gonna keep using my medium round. I'm cool using it. I'm mixing red with a little bit of white on my plate to make a nice hot pink color. Again, change the bloom colors if you like. I kind of just chose, um, yeah, some different colors. We didn't have quite yet. A nice bright pink, a nice bright purple. Oh no, it's not. Okay, Abby. Hey, canine. It's my NyQuil. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. Canine, welcome in. Happy Friday. These blooms are quite straightforward, everybody. We're just kind of using our brush. I like to start from the outside and work in, but I kind of just use the tip and I just pull down. I go a little bit further, maybe to the right. I go up and I pull down. So I'm meeting in the same spot where I pulled down. Pull down again, pull down again. That's my little bloom. It's just four little brush strokes, three or four little brush strokes that are all kind of tilting up. They kind of tilt left to right, but they all meet in the same spot at the bottom. Uh, I did water down my paint a little bit. You can see it's not dripping because it's a little more solid. So same idea. I just want to keep it a little cleaner so I'm not going to water it down too, too much. For a brush stroke, it's like a prong shape, right? You're just kind of pulling them down and in. Let's do another one here. Maybe that one only has three, that's fine. I'm having this thought that I mix matte medium with acrylic so it would basically be the same as acrylic gouache. Any thoughts on that? Ooh, I wish I could comment. I'm honestly not too rehearsed in gouache. Matte medium with acrylics, basically the same. And I've never worked with a matte medium, yeah. I mean, that sounds right, Miss Regs. I think that sounds correct. I think you're on the right path. I've just never experienced it personally, so I can't confirm. But I think that sounds right. Yeah, I'd be curious what you think of that. If you're ever back here after you tried, I'd so be down to hear. So that that exists, huh? Where you can like purchase it pre-mixed like that and a, a, you're calling it an acrylic gouache. I don't know if I've ever heard of that. I think I've heard of the hybrid. I just didn't know it was called acrylic gouache. It's a nice little ring to it. Hmm. Yeah, curious about your findings. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with a different color over here for a bloom, everybody. I'm just going to mix together a nice purple this time. So it's going to be red and blue mixed together. It's going to be darker than um, kind of the purple we were doing in there, of course. So red and blue, maybe a little bit of water, but not much, because again, we want to keep in control. But same technique, I'm just kind of a couple little brush strokes in. They're all kind of yeah, leaning out their own little ways. Maybe this one has three here. I'm just gonna give this guy two and that's it. Again, sticking to my original. There we go. Oops. Oh, thank you guys. Give me a quick second. Sorry, my voice is all messed up. I think I know how to fix it. Hold on. I should be no robot right now. Fabric paint, paint on canvas, nearly thing. Good, thank you very much. Give me another quick 30 seconds. We're gonna go to here. This one first. Still good, I hope. <laughs> Miss Rags, this is like, <laughs> this has been a problem for weeks now. Okay, no robot, excellent. Hopefully there's no robot here. This is the final test, final test, no robot. <laughs> yes, good. I hope. Yay, I'm human again, thank you. Thanks everybody. <laughs> I did try something, I did try and uh, use Wood's advice. He sent me a video recently and uh, it unfortunately didn't work. Wee. Stream elements, man, I, I'm, I'm telling you it's coming and then that, hopefully that fixes it. And if not, I don't know, I'm calling Elgato and giving them a piece of my mind. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna keep going with the tutorial, catch up on chat in a second. I see if you be chatting, feel free to keep going. Um, I'm just gonna get messy now. It's time for the very messy part before we start outlining. Outlining is kind of the last little bit. Uh, outlining and I guess the little details in the cactus, of course. 
Uh, but messiness first. I like all these splatters that I have, so I'm gonna purposely start to splatter on my canvas. If you don't like the splatters, you can of course skip this, but I'm gonna start splattering. So you can dip into any color that you've already used here. So even if you have a dried up color, you can kind of grab some water, swirl it around, it'll probably re-wet the color again. And then you have a nice watery, wet color that you can use to splatter with. So I just grabbed my green to start kind of that original light green. And after making it nice and wet and watery, all you need to do is use your index finger. You can pull back on the bristles and I'm just letting them fly a little bit. So anywhere kind of around my green, if it goes a little bit further, that's fine. But I'm just splattering all around the green for now. Anywhere where I kind of see the color, I'm just gonna splatter it and make it even messier. So I'm going around this cactus here. Maybe I'll dip into my blue green. I'll go around this guy a bit. So again, watery paint, index finger. I'm going nice and close to the canvas and then splatter, 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 splatter. Splatter, 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 splatter. Look at that. You can't really see. I'll move this forward here. There they are. They're very subtle. That's why I like them. They're, they're quite subtle, but they are there filling up that nice spot. So again, take any colors you like. You can start to do this for a little longer here. I like to keep do the bloom colors and I like to splatter right by the blooms. I think that's a really pretty effect, like right where they are. Makes them look like they've exploded into the photo, exploded into the picture. Um, what else here? I guess that kind of, we have the purple shade. Let's do that. So yeah, just get messy with it. Have some fun. And we got some little details and outlining to do. All right. Uh, Miss Rags, hold me and has a line of it. I can't get it anywhere in Norway though, so I haven't been able to test it. Okay, okay. Yeah, I wish I had more, more suggestions for you. I'm in Canada, so I'm, I'm quite far away. Or else I'd let you know, like, stores I shop at, maybe where you can find it. Nice green fabric paint. Oh, I got you, Lynn. I got you. <laughs> Aaron Robot. <laughs> All right. We got through the robot phase. We're good. <laughs> Don't forget to tell these special people in your life just how special they are. You're all special to me. Oh, there's Lynn. You're all special to me, Buns Group. Oh, is it an emergency, Abby? Maybe she's busy. Moms work hard, you know? A little more splatter for me. Not much, not much. I'm just gonna splatter maybe some pot colors there. So I have that kind of coral that's being splattered right now. I'll dip into my yellowy orange maybe. And do a little more. Splatter, 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 splatter. And a little down there. Ah, yeah, I just like to fill up the whole thing, honestly. There we go. Very colorful. Give you a nice other like, close up here. So again, I keep mine very, very small and subtle, but they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Very messy. Cool. Oh, you're asking her for food? Again, she's probably working hard. <laughs> special. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, I'm not that special. Jeez. Mm -mm. All right, so most of the details left. I'll just kind of go through them in case anyone... Oop, in case anyone's wondering. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we have a lot of outlining. We we first have a little bit of detail left just with like inside some of the cactuses. I like to take a dark green to do some kind of like texture lines here, some little ridges in here. And then what I do is I take black to make some little pricklies. I use a gray to do the macrame hanging plant and then it'll be a lot of outlining. So again, you can stop at any time here. I mean, I think it looks great right now. I know this this pot is a little bit floaty. I guess we can put the macrame on it. Maybe I'll do that next, just so those who don't want to outline everything can uh, do that next. But anyway, 
Uh, yeah, point is, you can stop at any time. If you like it very messy, very loose like this, this would be a great place to stop. But I'm gonna do a couple more things before the outlining, so if you wanna watch that and consider, you can, uh, you can do that. So yeah, let's do the macrame first for the hanging plant, because I think that's probably most important. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm switching now officially to a nice, uh, tiny brush, a nice small round brush. And I'm going to mix together white with a tiny bit of black. Just a little bit of black is needed because we're making a nice light gray color. If we were to use white, we wouldn't be able to see the macrame up here. So that's why I chose gray. We can kind of see on both surfaces here. White and a little bit of black. And I will not be watering this down. I'm using like a little bit of a watery brush, I would say, but I'm not trying to water down the paint. I'm not trying to make the paint uh, liquidy or anything because I want to be very much in control for this step here. Oh, sounds good, Lori. No worries. Great evening if I don't catch the ending. Of course, of course. Yep. I don't know how much longer I'll be, but who knows? Maybe I will be on. <laughs> Too much yellow splatter. Got a big clump of them. You could always wait for it to dry and cover up if you want. Um, yeah, just choose a section, put white on top, let it dry. Splatter again if you need to. Smash my middle finger. Why is everyone hurting themselves? <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm, I'm looking at my screen as well, uh, Lynn, and I can see a little bit on there. I was a little bit messy today. All right, so I'm doing a nice light gray. Uh, the first thing that I do is I do three lines to kind of have the plant hanging, of course. So I go roughly in the same area here. They don't all have to be in the exact same spot, but I'm going from, yeah, roughly the middle. I'm first gonna come down to the very left-hand side. I know straight lines are scary for some, so if you need to whip out something to help you, go ahead. But I just kind of freehand it, just like the rest of this painting, right? If something's a little shaky or a line's a little bit wobbly, it kind of just adds, in my opinion. It's all kind of part of the part of the look for this one, thankfully. So if you have a little bit of a shaky line or one that isn't super straight, don't worry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start a little to the right from that one. Come down to the right-hand edge, just anywhere close to the right-hand edge, too. Doesn't need to be exact. Ouch, Abby, ouch! Covering it up with the strings for the hangy boy. <laughs> Excellent. Hipster, welcome in with a party of seven. Hello! How's it going? I'm gonna put on this last string here and then I'll chat with you in a second. I'm just doing a third string, everybody that comes straight down. And it overlaps a little bit because I like to put it in the front here. It's kind of hanging on from the front side, personally. If you want to put it in the back side, you can. Maybe you're taking a little bit to load up there, hipster, but I'm going to shout you out here in the meantime. Oh yeah, I'm not even sure if you're in the chat there. Hipster. Oh, there you are. Cool. Elite Dangerous. I think you were playing that last time, too. How's your week been? If you can hear me. Maybe you're loading up still. We'll see. <laughs> uh, once we have the three strings, everybody, I like to do a little bit of a macrame design. I'll just zoom in so you can really see it. But pretty straightforward. It's just like little diamond shapes. You can think of them as X's. Depends how you look at it. But pretty much you're doing, you're kind of having those three little spots, the outside, the middle, and the other side. Uh, doing angled lines coming in and meeting in the middles. And then they come out meet in the middle yeah however you think of it v shapes diamonds x's something like that but again i'm starting from the uh outside here i'll do an angled line coming in i'll meet it with an angled line coming in from the other side that's one go in here in there that's a v shape there and then you're coming out out, out, out. And these two will meet here. And you just kind of do that pattern until you reach the bottom. I kind of only do about two rows. You can see I did kind of down and then over. So I'm just going to keep that here. You can see. Um, you can see maybe a little bit of white here and there. If you want to purposely add that in, you can. But honestly, from what I remember, I think that was just me not mixing my gray fully. And so I got some little like marbling or streaks of white, but you can obviously add little, little extra white on top of the gray if you like those highlights. 
There he is. There's Hipster. Sorry, Hipster. I was chatting with you earlier. I don't know if you heard me. <laughs> Thanks for shout out. Always. Was doing some space killing today. Well, one kill. <laughs> Week was kind of crazy. Got a couple days to do stress. Like the cactuses, cacti, cactus. Yeah, I, I, same, same. I've said cacti when I've been referring to one cactus. I've said cactus when referring to multiple. So we are on the same level. Yeah, don't worry about it. They, they're green. They're green. They're green friends. We have round boy. We have long boy. And we have hangy boy. I forget what we called this one, but that's okay. <laughs> Thanks for the raid. Thank you for uh, bringing your peeps over. Did. Okay, great. I think my chat is messed up. No worries. F me. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> I just know during raids sometimes, hipster, like, I'll raid and then all of a sudden, right when the chatter starts talking, something like just, <laughs> it doesn't load properly. I'm like, oh no, refresh and I miss what they say. So <laughs> I think it's all the chaos of like shutting down things and then everything just kind of freezes up. Anyway, all good. You're here now. Okay, so that's the macrame um, hanging area. I'll keep that maybe there for 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, and then we have some little ridges to add and then it's just black outline from there, everybody. The dangerous is uh, painting to painting is a good, uh, <laughs> yeah, basically opposites, right? <laughs> Dichotomy basically off of it, opposites. I meant to represent the duality of man, Ob obviously, obviously. Really big brain thinking ahead with your, uh, <laughs> with your raids. <laughs> me art art category i just i just look through art and you're like no how can we just like spice up this whole stream just like get the complete opposite let's go painting <laughs> absolutely <laughs> oh, big brain disengage <laughs> time to chill do you have any plans for the rest of the evening are you like playing anything offline now um all right i'm gonna move on to the ridges here i'll just zoom in to show you so before the black outline black is last and next uh we do a little bit of these little uh ridges i keep calling them ridges within the cactus here i use like a nice dark green and i do these nice long kind of curvy lines they all start from the top middle of each round bulb and then they come all the way down to the bottom middle so if you're going on the outside you're going way around like this a nice big deep curve if you're going more in the middle, it's more of a casual curve, almost like a vertical line there. So yeah, you're just working your way around. And then the uh, the one on the right has them too. These are a lot more straight, of course, for the long boy. They're not gonna be as round. So they just kind of curve close to the outside and then go more in the middle. And you can see it's more of a bluish green that I use for that one. All right, so we'll start on this one, the left-hand side. I'm just continuing to use my small round brush and I'm mixing a kind of medium to dark green so using yellow and blue maybe like even amounts of those that way it's not super super dark and I am adding a little bit of water just for the sake of allowing the paint to flow a little bit better if it's really thick it's going to be really dry and kind of scratchy and grab at the canvas if you add a tiny bit of water it helps really flow so just for that purpose it's not a messiness purpose it's just to help it flow all the way Again, I'm going to start in the top middle of one of my round shapes here, and I'm going to curve around and then back down to the middle. And as I work my way in, I'm making my curves a little less, a little less curvy. The curves are less curvy. Oh, battery again, huh? I see you. I see you. So keep working your way around. exhausted nice color nice cactus thank you thank you probably just get late dinner and get ready to go to the gym oh it's bad this week you can go back that's a good habit hipster i don't know if our gyms are open right now i i can't keep track i know they were closed i don't know if they're back open though curving around the other way as i reach over halfway right you start to curve the other way That's good though, hipster. I'd love to get back to doing that. Again, I just don't know what's open in my area anymore. I know my membership's on hold because I checked my visa and they have not been charging me. So I assume that means they're closed still. Then I took a vacation, a vacation on my membership while it was open because I was like, I still don't feel comfy going even though you're open. So <laughs> vacation. Okay, I'm doing that to each and every uh, piece of the cactus here, of course. 
And I'm kind of choosing, right, which one is in front of each other. So you saw this one. I kind of hid it behind this one because I know I want this one in the foreground. So just think about that as you're going along. You might not want to overlap every single one. Work stress this week, man. I ate a lot of McDee's. Eat away. I got gotcha. you. I know how that skip the dishes can get when it's stressful. <clears throat> Excuse me. I definitely go through phases, hipster, where I'm doing that every every day of the week, and then another week I'm very good. But yep, usually it's the stressful weeks. <laughs> yeah, I was lucky. I uh, well, they always had it within their system to take like a vacation. Technically, like if you're not you know in town and using the gym, I think they give you up to three or four weeks of vacation. I just never used it, so I was like, well, now's the time. Yeah, this makes them look way more round. And they don't need to be top middle, right? They could be a little bit slanted, so if you want to start maybe in the top left, that's fine too, as long as all your lines are starting in the same spot, or generally the same spot. That's good, Lynn, I'm glad. Even not painting along can be nice and relaxing too. I'm gonna do a little bit more here. Yeah, especially the outline. You'll see when I start to outline, I find that very satisfying and relaxing. Mm hmm. Stress a new job made it way too easy to justify needing a new wardrobe. Spent way too much. Oh, I'm. <laughs> sounded like you had a little bit of fun though, Alvin. I know you're like first time wearing real people clothes in so long. Again, like. I think you deserved it too. <laughs> After all the years that you've been uh, working with your other company and now you're excited about a new job, I think now is the time to really treat yourself with that kind of stuff. And you're wearing it for work, you know? All right, everyone, I'm just on my plate and I'm mixing more of a blue green now. So I'm just adding a little more blue to my existing green that I was already using. And I'm pretty much just doing the same thing. The only difference is because of the shape of the cactus, these lines won't be as round, right? We're kind of just Starting from the top middle, following this edge, and then coming down. Yep, just anything to add a little bit of texture. You can see how messy and kind of like wiggly that looks too. These are in no way nice and straight or nice and perfectly curved. Truly, if there's any painting you can be really messy with, I really think it's this one. You can really have a good time. Yeah, just letting loose with it. Don't worry too much about anything in this. Top middle, I'm gonna curve around and down. Around and down. Oopsie, I lost a little bit of paint there. So yeah, the longer strokes you might lose a little bit of paint. It looks a little scratchy almost. You can just pick up more paint and start where you left off. As I said before though, a little bit of water helps with that fluidity. It makes it a little more fluid. And I'll do like one more in the middle, I think. Cute. And we uh, can't forget this guy here. There we go. Give him some ridges. Awesome. So those are all the details that I add before the black. So again, again, like not to keep pushing you a certain way, but if you don't like the outlines, if you like the painting now, just kind of messy, you could easily stop here at this stage too. You could have stopped at multiple stages, but this is another one, another stage you could stop at if you like the idea of having a little more open. Mm hmm. Agree with you. In the mornings while I work, I have to keep the painting off the side. Yes, yes. I went out of control. Oh, did you, Alba? No, no. I don't know the details, but sometimes uh, just get out of control. Yeah. Mm hmm. We can all be forgiving. Okay. So at this stage, again, at this stage, everybody is adding the black. And the black is mostly used for outlining. There's, I guess, a detail or two that we add with the black, like the little spikes, the little pricklies on our cacti. We have two different types of pricklies. You can choose one type or both types, whatever you like. These ones are more star-shaped. They almost look like little spiders, honestly. So if you don't like that look, don't go for it. But I think it's kind of cute. Um, yeah, they look like little spiders when you zoom out, but otherwise they are just little star shapes. They're just kind of like a crisscross with three or four lines, probably more like three. 
kind of do a diagonal, diagonal, horizontal, or diagonal, diagonal, vertical, whatever works. Uh, and then you're just using the black to outline the rest of the cactus as well. Um, just to go over the pricklies first before we do the outlines, these pricklies on the long boy cactus are more like the prong shapes, kind of like the prongs of our um, blooms here. Just kind of like three or four lines, like in a V-shape, prong shape, uh, and they all go along the outsides. I didn't do anything on the insides of this cactus, just the outsides. So yeah, V-shapes or three, four, anything just coming from a solid point and kind of jetting out. That's, that's more the vibe for this one here. Okay. So maybe I'll do those first and then I'll do outlines. So same thing, I'm doing the teeny tiny uh, small round brush with some black paint. I am mixing a little bit of water in it, just so it's a little more fluid. That's again the only reason it's not to mess it up, it's just to make it more fluid. But these ones, you can do like an X and then one more solid line through it, one more straight line, either vertical or horizontal. You can see I place them on the ridges, so they'll kind of travel up and down the ridges. Just add a couple, see how it looks. You can add a couple more. There's no real method to how many I'm adding. It's just kind of filling it up until I think it looks a little more full than it used to. You could add some on the outsides too, if you liked the look of the long boy cactus. So doing a couple like little three prongs or just like one little, one little prickle or two. And you're doing that anywhere close to the outside of your cactus. Again, because it's so messy, it can be a little bit inside or a little bit outside, it doesn't matter, but just anywhere along those edges. You can again, switch it up. You can do X shapes. You don't have to do three solid lines every single time. I'm just going all along, filling it up. It's all little details that come together. I agree, Lynn, yeah. This one, yeah, this one is neat with all the stages, honestly, because, you know, I would say most of my paintings, you know, it comes together at the end, you want to stay to the very end and make sure you're getting all the details. But this one, I honestly think there's multiple points where you can just stop. You can just uh, stop with your, with your happy little painting. You don't need to add every single detail that I am. And it kind of gives it a different look every single time at whatever stage you stop at, right? Like I kept saying, before even outlining it, it looks completely different. It's still, still not fully outlined, right? So it'll look different in like 10 more minutes here. Again, these little, these little pricklies are like V-shaped or three-pronged and they all just go along the outsides of this one. So I'm not doing anything on the insides. We need some, obviously we need some little pricklies if this is a cactus, right? Dark, welcome in, hello, hello. How are you this lovely Friday evening? So yeah, anywhere along the outsides. Don't forget, you can go kind of on the insides here because we have the little arms, right? They'll have their own little spikies popping out. That should be fun. Cute, so I'll give you a little close up. You can see what I added here. So those are little stars or spiders. These ones are more of the, uh, yeah, just outside pricklies. So the V shapes are prongs. That's those ones. We'll give a quick minute or two. And then truly the last step is just outlining things. I have a couple things to say about the outlining, but it truly is just outlining with black. So that'll be our final step again. If you like it very messy like this, you could stop at this stage. But I especially like the black for the middle plant personally. I think it really helps kind of separate uh, the green from the pot here because of course it gets a little bit messy. You can still see the green against it, but I especially like the black for that step. So that's just me. Oh no, are you allergic, Dark? I prefer stars than spider. Remember your friend spider? I remember Sammy. I think it was Sam or Sammy, right? Oh, I remember. Very special place in my heart. <laughs> Traveled with me to my living room. Got a little too close. For those who don't know or who weren't here, Sam the Spider, yep. <laughs> um, there was one, to it was during a tutorial, right, Lynn? It was like the whole week of streams, but mainly during a tutorial, I had a spider 
going across my ceiling. <laughs> and I, I don't really like spiders when they get too close. I don't mind them, but in my space it's a little much. And he was going all the way across and I would be teaching and I'd be like, oh, he's moving, he's moving. And then he legitimately went right above me at one point and then went behind me. And I was like, I need to see him in my view. And we lost him at one point. And it ended up that, yeah, he, he hid and then I couldn't find him for a couple days. And then I was in my living room, which is over there. And he crawled up beside me on my blanket as I was watching TV. And I was like, that's not, I didn't invite you out here. <laughs> we were cool in here, but not out there. And he joined me out there when I was watching TV one day. So that was a little alarming. <laughs> and then I let him outside and I've never seen him again. But he is in the wilderness somewhere, I will trust. I hope he lived. Nothing against him, he was just trying to hang out. Yeah, it was so funny. Yeah, and I took photos, Lynn. I don't know if you remember, but I legitimately took photos because I couldn't believe it. It was the exact same spider and I was like, it's him. I took photos of him on my blanket. <laughs> Cause I knew no one would believe me. <laughs> All right guys, I'm just going to go ahead and outline now. So there's no real technique to this step, of course. Um, I'll say again, I like to water down my black a little bit with my teeny tiny brush that allows it to flow a little bit more So that might be that might make it a little easier for you And the only thing I'll say as well is that again, you can be messy with this um, I'll zoom in and I'll show you what I mean You do not need to hug the exact outside of the green. Here's some green spilling over here here is some white inside the line I think it looks even better that way when it's nice and loose especially with these blooms I love having it kind of spilling out, you know? So that's just one little like piece of confidence there. You don't need to worry about going all the way around every little bump and crevice that you've made. I actually love the idea of having it kind of come in and come out, especially on the pot. You can see this yellow outside, these unconnected lines, you know? I personally like the look. I offset it on purpose sometimes. So anyway, so just so you know that it doesn't have to be a perfect outline. The idea is really just that you're adding a nice dark little, uh, yeah, little edge around everything. So here we go. Again, I'm gonna purposely offset it here and there. Just following the shapes you've already made. So there's no real further advice here. It's just going nice and slow. Hopefully you find this nice and relaxing to just kind of zone out do some lines. I'm just reloading my brush about every single time here, anytime I do a new line. So that, that way it comes off uh, nice and clean. Again, like leaving it unconnected, leaving a gap there. Totally fine. Whoopsie. Keep some lines disconnected if you want, you know, make some spaces in between them. Make some a little thicker or a little thinner. Add more pressure to your brush if you want it thicker. To my birthday dinner. Oh no. Oh no, but you're feeling better it sounds like dark. At least you know what the cause was, right? You can avoid peanuts as you said, never again, never again. See, it really gives it a whole new look doing this outline. Helps separate things a little bit more. Makes them a little more bold. Told you he was a new friend and went to cuddle up. He wanted you to paint him. Right, it was around Halloween, right? And we we're like, we need the spider somewhere. We added him to the witch painting. Oh, hokey, spikes are green or black was feeding baby. Yeah, they are black. Uh, the inside ridges are green, but I did the spikes in black. Mm-hmm. Yes, I put it in the witch painting, if you remember, yep. Yeah, I'm glad, Dark. I'm glad you're feeling better. Uh, for the blooms, if anyone's curious about the exact like shape and outline I do, here you go. They're kind of just like curves that come to points. You're kind of just following along each petal, doing some overlapping here and there. Again, very messy. Some of my curves are left open. Some of them are a little bit... Yeah, again, overlap. See how that one overlaps there. Again, I don't think too much about it. I just try and... Three, four. Curve, 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 curve. Many curves all connecting. Curve, 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 curve. Let's do this one while I'm on the on the blooms here. Boom, 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 boom. There. 
There we go. I'll zoom out just so you can see it all again. Um, I don't outline the macrame in case anyone's wondering. I just keep the macrame and just the uh, just the gray there. But I do outline all the leaves, every single leaf. I'm outlining the pot first as usual. Very loose black outline. Whoops, that was a little bit wavy. That's okay. There we go. And I'm just doing uh, little outlines for each of my leaves. I'll zoom in on those so you can see what I mean there. Again, super loose. I would say I just do two curves to outline those. The two curves come to uh, little tips at the ends. Curve to a tip, curve to a tip. Outwards curves each time. No matter what the leaf looks like, I just try and like house it in that little curve curve outline. So even if it's more of a round, you know, leaf, I just make the curves a little bit more wide. If it's a longer stroke, I just kind of lengthen them that way. So it's all the same technique, just kind of moving around whatever leaf shape you have. Again, very loose as well. These are not slowly done. I'm not getting exact perfect leaf shapes. I'm just very loosely adding them. Check these ones out. Leaving some gaps. Maybe they don't meet the whole way. Maybe there's some white in between. All good. Again, it's not to encourage you to rush it. It's just more so that, um, yeah, if you want to keep the style of the messy painting, then I'm just kind of encouraging you to be a little more loose, if anything. It's not necessarily rushing. Just being a little more free. Or you could, like, you could spend a way more time on it, get it very, very clean if that's the look you're going for. I would just keep it consistent. If you're doing clean lines for the leaves, do clean everywhere else. And yeah, you can tilt the leaves to wherever they're going, right? If they're kind of coming up from the pot here, you can make sure that the points are kind of showing that direction and then they kind of come around, the points are more horizontal, come back down. So kind of think about where the leaf is traveling, where the vine is traveling. And you can see how this one side here looks way more, yeah, separated. You can really see the greenery in the leaves because of the black outline. So that's a good comparison there if you want to see before and after. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course, Lynn. If you gotta go, you gotta go. Really nice chatting with you. I'll be on tomorrow if you uh, want to chat more. Otherwise, I'll see you soon, I'm sure. Again, glad you're safe from that little pool tree incident. Glad it's being worked on. Yeah, I like it too. It's, uh, yeah, I kind of go back and forth, honestly, Lynn. When I saw it without, I was like, it is really pretty without. Now that I add it, I'm like, no, I like the black outline. It's just different styles, right? I think it's a little more, I don't know, trendy modern one way. And it makes it a little more like less like watercolor in a way, you know, watercolor is not usually these bold outlines from what I see. So again, it's really what whatever you're going for. All right, I'm gonna do the nice long one here. Shocked I've not fallen asleep yet. Oh yes. Yeah, I've heard people fall asleep honestly during my tutorials. I really don't mind though. It's not offensive to me at all. You saying I'm boring? No, it's just uh, some people find it super relaxing and they end up napping. Um, and I, you know what? I've fallen asleep to Bob Ross before, so <laughs> that's okay. Learning while you sleep though, right? <laughs> Maybe you're intaking some of the info as you're sleeping. You wake up, you're like, oh, I know everything now. <laughs> I know how to paint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, Lynn. 4.30, gotta go sleep. Oh, of course, Miss Rags. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know uh, I know the time change with uh, you're up there. Holy moly. I'm glad you enjoyed, though. Yeah, have a great night. Um, Sorry, I know you said you do art. I'm just gonna pop the Discord in chat in case you're curious of sharing your art. 
I should have offered that earlier. I'd love to see what you get up to with your gouache and acrylics if you end up doing the uh, the mixture. Either way though, have a good night if you gotta go, of course, of course. Yep, same says Hokey Bob Ross videos helps my boyfriend sleep. Yep, I've heard stories of, um, <laughs> well, a mom told me during an in-person painting event, uh, she said, I had trouble getting my baby to sleep for years. She said, for years. <laughs> And then one day she put on a Bob Ross uh, Joy of Painting episode and the baby slept soundly <laughs> throughout the whole night. And she said she used that forevermore and it worked every time. And I was like, no way. So she had no solutions, no solutions, but then Bob Ross saved her sanity. <laughs> so all the baby needed was a little bit of uh, artistic instruction from Bob. And he was like, I'm, I'm good with sleeping now. <laughs> thanks heather thank you yeah it's very different for me i don't know if you have checked out my instagram like all my other past tutorial paintings and even my personal work but i don't often use acrylics I, I never use acrylics like this the only time i've ever watered them down is to splatter with them i do splattering for stars and stuff when i do galaxies oh that's not true i guess i've watered them down for the galaxies as well i did a galaxy technique with watery colors but very much so that was like the one step and then I kind of moved on to using the acrylics the more regular way again so this is very different in terms of doing like a the whole painting almost this way yeah I'm glad you like it oh yeah do we okay is it next weekend or this oh we lose an hour oh we lose an hour on Sunday that'll be nice though and then stays lighter for longer I'd rather lose the hour and get the proper time back <laughs> proper sunshine back Mm-hmm. and then you dream of painting with Bob Dark that sounds so lovely yeah you should oh good Miss Riggs I'll see you in there excellent excellent yup well I was seeing my baby she was uh craning her head to stare at your paint oh my gosh <laughs> That's wild, Hokey. I'm sure there's more with similar stories. That was definitely from an in-person event. I was laughing so much. I was like, no way. But that's so funny how they're just entranced by it. And maybe the voice too. I don't know. Just the constant talking. This week, don't forget, I won't Lynn. Thankfully, I'm not streaming on... I don't think I'm going to stream on Sunday. So I won't be messing up anything like going live or anything, <laughs> thankfully. I'll just make sure to lose the hour. Okay, I'm just looking around the painting. I think that, yeah, I'm 99% sure that's the last step. Just looking for any, any other details, but I think that's all. It was just the outline to clean it up, right? Yeah. Yeah, that is, uh, yeah, that's definitely the last step, guys. So if you've done all the black outlines, you are technically done the design. So as usual, throw a little signature on there if you're all done. I'm gonna use green to match all my nice greenery there. Aaron Bunn, wee! And uh, yeah, and that's, that's the painting. So I, I'm still here, I'm not gonna shut off right now, don't worry. So if you're still painting a little bit, keep going. And I'll do a little bit of a, uh, you know, some more information about some future tutorials, future streams for ya. First I'll catch up on Choi. Voice is soothing, oh thank you. Oh Pleb, welcome back! It's Pleb here tonight, not the other Pleb, I haven't seen him tonight. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> potate. <laughs> you ready to ready to chat with him? You're welcome, Sharon. Yes, I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, for those wondering, uh, during stream tomorrow, it's gonna be Sharon's 10 by 10 redemption. She's requested a lot of pink. She's requested kind of a snowy landscape, so I'm very excited. It's right up my alley. So that'll be tomorrow starting at 11. Yay! Firecat, nice to see you again with extra fire, of course, yes. The side of extra fire, the spiky plants are spiky. They are. <laughs> spiky plants are spiky. Absolutely. Uh, how's it going tonight, Firecat? I'm starting to think there's not another pleb and you all are just playing a trick on me. Why would we do that? Why would we do that to a nice new member of our community and say, we already have a pleb here. <laughs> it's not something I would do, pleb, but it is something that the chat would do, honestly. It is something that they would do, but I promise you, I promise you. Uh, the user is pleb as usual. Another pleb, different name. Aaron is so good at painting, almost as good as me, hipster. Show off your work. I want to see it. I bet you are a good artist. Maybe you're just hiding them all. You're not showing anything you've ever done. 
See you, Lynn. So excited! Yes, 11 a.m. EST, Heather. Yep, yep, yep. EST. Eastern Standard Time Zone. That's the one that gets everybody. Everyone's always like, what time zone? Anyway, uh, for those who are done and for those who are maybe still painting uh, along with the tutorial, thank you for coming. Thank you everyone for coming. It's not just people painting. Thank you everybody. Again, it's always extra fun on Fridays with the uh, bigger group. So thank you for continuing to come. Can't say enough how much it does help me that you're all here watching. So thank you. Um, I'm just going, I'm trying to navigate on Facebook here because I'm trying to set up the uh, event page for you to post your photos. There we go. So there's some information in the chat right now regarding photos. Um, if you'd like to take photos of your paintings, that is, and share them with anybody, with all of us, with me, with anyone else who painted, I'd recommend checking out any of those links. So I have the Facebook events link there. There's a link to our Discord where we have an art share channel. Uh, there is Instagram, Twitter. You can use those and tag me or follow me and uh, that way I can see what you're posting. Uh, but yeah, I'm just opening up the event page right now to allow you to post there if you want to post in the event page because I find that's the most popular place to post is in the Facebook event page, I should say. So post those if you'd like because we love seeing everyone's beautiful paintings because again, that's the cool part is that we all painted them together, right? We can see how they all turned out, how they all differ, what you did differently with the background or the pot colors or whatnot. So I really encourage you to do that. Um, if you're looking for another tutorial, I have another one already booked for next week. Uh, next week is a tiny bit different just because I'm not doing a Friday night. I've stayed very consistent with Friday nights at 8 p.m. EST. I have a private painting event on next Friday. So instead we're doing this guy on Saturday. We're doing these guys. We're doing the two jellyfishies. I really like this one. I'm really excited for it. It's so colorful and beautiful. Uh, it'll be Saturday. I think it's the 20th whatever next Saturday is, 20th, I got it, uh, 2 p.m. EST. So it's gonna be like a mid-afternoon event. So a little bit different. And I hope that means that maybe some of you who can't usually come live, maybe you can come live because it's on a weekend, it's on a different time of day. So I'm just uh, curious to see who's gonna like it, who's gonna wanna come on that different time. But I hope it works out for most people. Uh, as a reminder, if you're looking for this uh, tutorial or any others, I post them all on YouTube. So if you miss this, you can always go to YouTube. I'll upload this as soon as possible. If you're itching to do it before I upload it to YouTube, you can always come back here to Twitch. Uh, check out my past videos by clicking on my username then clicking on videos. And then you can see all of my past videos from the past couple weeks at least. Uh, so you can always follow along here on Twitch by re-watching the video. Um, what else? I don't know. I don't think there's much else to say. Uh, there's some links, I guess, uh, or commands to the side there. If you type in any of those titles, the exclamation supplies, exclamation YouTube, etc. tips prime, those will all show you more information. So tips and prime, if you're interested in tipping me for the free tutorial today, that information is there. If you type in exclamation tips, thank you for those who do. It's never expected, just always appreciated. Prime is just a way you can subscribe for me uh, to me for free. Um, subscribing via Twitch is just another way to help support me. Thank you for those two. Again, never require, just option. Uh, but Prime, subscribing with Prime is free. It's free to you. It literally gives me uh, financial income, financial compensation uh, once a month every time you subscribe with Prime. So if you're interested in supporting me at no cost to you, <laughs> check out that one. If you have Amazon Prime, you can do that for free. Um, but yeah, otherwise I just thank you all for being here. It's just, uh, it's really, I really appreciate everyone just tuning in live. That's really all I could ask for. So thank you. And just the fact that you continue to enjoy these. I'm just very, very glad. So that's my spiel. I'll uh, catch up on comments right now and I'm going to stick around if anyone needs help. So you feel free to pop in the chat if you need help or want to say anything. Thank you.